Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Uncensored Anime Podcast, a podcast where we talk about all things anime uncensored. We are your hosts. I'm David. We got Jerry. We got Kenny. Welcome, listeners, to episode 49. Uh, we're really excited to be back. Uh, you know, we 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 weave in and out of taking breaks. Yeah, what does what does be me working. be back in this context? We're actually posting like on time. Like last episode would have yeah. been like back. So this is like, um, you know, we're we're back to consistency. We say this all the time, and sometimes we deliver, sometimes you don't. But you know what? We we love doing this. We love talking about anime, and hopefully you do too. So hopefully the release schedule doesn't matter as long as you get to listen to us speak. It doesn't. That's all that matters. So this so is, we're back. This is my favorite part about the intro. Okay, David always leans so close to his mic. He get he so like, I hear him. I hear him through the wall. And so it's like, I'm like, oh, hello, David. Because he's... <laughs> David's like... Usually just, he's like back I just want to get... Like, hello, everyone. The Uncensored Anime Podcast. I just I just want to get real close. What's wrong with that? Uh, but no, today today's a fun episode. We're going to be talking about, you know, put a, a pin in a lot of the Netflix shows that came out in fall, as well yeah. as a little bit of fall wrap up. If we have time, we'll talk about the Crunchyroll Awards. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll wait see. see if we have time. We'll see. Um, so yeah, so Jerry, big boy, take it away. I've decided executively right now that every song I'm singing tonight is just going to be Linkin Park. I'm just going to do three Linkin Park oh, songs. Bro. That's going to be my entire Wait. repertoire. That I'm joking. Wait, I was thinking about doing just like yeah, goofy white. I'm songs. just going to do Linkin oh, Park tonight. I'm doing yeah. Numb. I'm doing the other one by oh, Linkin Park. Good no. I mean, Can I become so numb? Wait, oh, yeah. so, so listeners, for those of you that aren't aware, um, we are all not only are we. Weeaboos, but we are karaoke boos. Um, what did he just say? I, I think you made that shit that up. Karaoke <laughs> boos, like what? Like we are lovers of karaoke. We love. We karaoke. go out every Monday and Thursday night. <laughs> yeah, we're regulars. Yeah. Uh, so that's what Jerry was referring to. Yes, but, um, we go to a local place that does karaoke, and we really enjoyed it. It's a good KJ. We go. I mean, we were going to a place before the current place that we went for a while. And no, then we didn't, we didn't like it. But then about like October, November, December, January, about four months ago, we discovered this new place. And David and Kenny have been a lot more consistent than I have. But I've been, you know, six or seven times at this point. But yeah. um, they, they know Jerry's name. Too. They know me, too. Yeah. I mean, I've been, Kenny and David, though, they're besties with the with the bartender and stuff. But I think that tonight is just I just am in my feels. I just need to get up there and like vent it through Lincoln Park, you know, just yeah. get up there and just, you know. Also, what was that one? Didn't like someone from Lincoln Park, he went on and made a rap group and he was like, he was like, one percent concentrated power yeah, of will yeah. what's that fort one called minor. Fort yeah minor, fort, fort, minor. fort yeah, minor yeah yeah <laughs> and uh yeah that's what i'm gonna i'm gonna do that one too maybe i don't know just mike, a little... mike shinoda that's his name i knew right. his name i couldn't remember come on though. david but, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, come on david okay. i like to pride myself <laughs> on some music knowledge okay wait, so wait have you seen that interview though with uh i think it's one of the girls from g4 now Oh, Avali. She is, yes. Uh, yeah, she, yeah, yes. She, 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 she didn't know it was him. Dog, she's <laughs> and she was like, was she she is, she's actually very funny on G4, honestly. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, she's hilarious. I was she, not um, into hey, her before. G4, like, I didn't really reach know out about her. if you want an anime podcast. Uh, if you, you, you want to feature, us, you know. Yep. Hey, G4, G4, you've got three. You've we'll got podcast, three sexy man. boys here. Can, wait, could we get Avali on this, you think? I wonder if she if she's too big, you think so? I don't know. She, I, she is big. You never know. She only has like, wait, how much like does her solo stuff have? Let's look it up real quick. Uh, you know, I'll slide in her DMs and be like, "Hey, Avli." Uh, no, I'm, David, I'm you can't talk like to anybody. anybody anymore, I mean, she's okay. big. She's what? like, what? she's like yeah, on the cusp Jerry between. Do it, okay. Okay. Yeah, she only has fifty thousand on YouTube, which is not that big. And yeah, she one hundred seventy-three thousand on Twitter. On Twitter, oh, 170. That's actually wow. She actually has more on Twitter than YouTube. That's actually wait, because she used to commentate. Oh for wait, LCS isn't she major on is... Twitch? Let's look her up on Twitch. Was no, she? I think her. I think her largest is Twitter. Oh wow. Well, she has a hundred. She has more on Twitch than she does on YouTube. She has one hundred fourteen thousand on Twitch. So mm. she is still. I would. Still I'd say. Her, I'd say one hundred fourteen thousand is like pretty big though. Yeah. Yeah. What's your anyway, Instagram? Avli May. You, uh, G4 you probably never heard yeah, of Yeah, Avli, if you're listening, you, like you guys are cool. G4, We're fans. please. Yeah, we reach out. You. We will be the G4 anime podcast. Avli, if you're listening, name change. we'll change the name. We'll change the name. Yeah, we'll change the name. Yeah, the Uncensored G4 podcast. podcast. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm just, no, um, okay, whatever. Okay, so tonight, guys, we've been kind of like teasing this for like our last two episodes, but the boys have finally sat down and gotten through most of our stuff from fall. 
And there was a lot of kind of miscellaneous things we really want to cover because there's just a couple, like, just things we need to get into, I think, in detail. the Obviously, the big four that are kind of important tonight is we're going to finally talk about Arcane. All of us have watched it. Even me. Um, <laughs> even I watched it. We all watched Arcane. We're going to get into Arcane as in-depth as we can. JoJo's... What? Uh, what, oh, Kenny? We do have to say, David will be purchasing fiddlesticks for anybody. Yeah. Uh, no, don't. reach Kenny, out. Kenny. Because he said... No. <laughs> he, he said fiddlesticks was in the show. He's not in it. Okay, well... So. Yeah, actually, if you... De- no, if, anytime that I ever make up a fake contest people take it as serious and they get in our comments okay, no contest yeah there's no, no real contest, contest no, but no. <laughs> we we might do it some... if we were to hit 500 subs we could do another giveaway we've done two giveaways already and yep. wait do we do three giveaways yeah i, no uh, I don't know we did we did but, 10 giveaways no we've done a couple of we've done real serious giveaways but we usually have like one person in her so like nobody wants the stuff we're giving away i guess even though People did really want. I I don't know. Beside the I mean, point, we're almost, we're almost to four hundred subscribers. If we so genuinely we hit five hundred, if we hit five hundred, we'll do another giveaway. And if we hit a thousand, we'll do another giveaway as well. At least we'll give Perfect. away some manga or some anime DVD or some shit. So keep your eyes open. Uh, David and I definitely have some junk laying around. Not junk, cool stuff laying around that we can give away. But yeah, we're gonna talk about Arcane. We're gonna talk about the live action Bebop, even though Kenny and I didn't finish it. We're gonna get into it. We have to talk about JoJo's Part Six, Part One. Uh, they released 13 episodes of it on Netflix worldwide, so we got to get into that. We all watched all of that. And we watched the new Netflix original Bones anime, Super Crooks, which is based off of a U.S. comic book, which it adapts the whole comic book, but only at the very end. It also creates like a an original prequel that it comprises the first like seven or eight episodes. So we're going to get into detail about those four shows for sure. We might talk a little bit about Blue Period, Comey, Shaman King, Eden Zero. Those all had additional cores that came out. And I definitely want to da- let David and Kenny talk about the first season of Ranking of Kings, which is the other non-Netflix show. It's actually the only non-Netflix show that really any of us watched in the fall season, which is different for us because Netflix just kind of like took over. I don't know. Like, I don't know yeah. what's happening with Netflix. They really aren't. I would say they took over in the fall, but winter has realigned. Like, Winter, they don't yeah. really have anything important. Yeah, so, I feel like it's this is a crunchy season for sure. Yeah, oh, crunchy roll. I mean, they have Titan. Uh, Crunchy's got Titan, so like, well, yeah. Funimation are the, are is it a double? Do Crunchy roll and uh, Funimation get Titan? I actually don't know. I know I they have. If they I know do, players on both, but I don't know about Titan. Okay. If they have, if it's on Funimation or Crunchy roll, I'm always going to watch on Crunchy roll. Funimation yeah, Crunch- players just so shit. Oh yeah, Crunchy roll so- has the oh, superior. Yeah. For me, Crunchy roll just has this. Okay, so great. So we're gonna try to get through all that junk junk all of that recap we really just want to give you guys some of our actual i'm i plan at least for jojo's part six part one i I hate calling it that um and for super crooks uh and arcane we should give it a we haven't done ratings in a while like out of tens um so we might try to do some ratings cowboy bebop isn't really an anime so we I, i mean david i would like to hear your rating once we're done talking about it but um sure sure yeah it's been a bit but i remember i remember some some key things that yeah that, that were bad. Yeah, so, I remember so. some key things that were bad. So great. As well. Let's jump in. Guys, I think we need to start with the with the elephant in the room and that is Arcane. Because yeah. I have put it off for so long. I want to I I don't I'm cur- what I mean what do you guys think? What I I don't know. You got I think Now Kenny, you don't play tell the tell the people at home. You are not okay. really a league I, guy. I don't right? play League of Legends. Right. I played my 6th match of League of Legends last night. Um I played with our good friend and me and him played as both Vi and Jinx, and who are in the TV show. And f- oh, no fiddlesticks. Oh, right. wow. Fiddlesticks is money. He's, he's not costs in Arcane. He, yeah. he costs money? The he best real yeah. money. He's so, actually part of Noxus, which is a yeah, different yeah, yeah. city yeah, yeah, in, right, the, right, in the right, Runeterra yeah. universe, Jerry. But Vi said out loud, I'm Piltover's finest, as one of her voice lines in League. And I was like, I know what that is. You're a Piltover so fan was, now. I was like, wow, this is a very, yeah. Um, I really liked Arcane, except, well, I don't want to already get into spoilers, but I no, am let's, pissed about No, let's just hit the ground running. I mean, so, spoiler warning right now, if you haven't watched Arcane, we're going to get spoiler right warning. into it. Um, I did not like, it was the cuckiest ending that I could ever have asked for. Yeah, why, like everything... why? Why did it end that way? That really kind of pissed me off. It was, it was super cliffhanger It was like, hey, guess what? See you in season two. Yeah. Like, it... I, why would you treat me like that? What after this? Like it felt like everything was building to a thing, and then the thing didn't happen, and it was like, "See you next season." 
Yeah, I feel like cliffhangers can be handled a certain way that like get you excited and mm-hmm. not get you mad. And this ending left me a little mad because it was like they got they got hit with a rocket. But like, do they live? Yeah. Are they alive? What's the damage here? Like, I want to know all those answers <sighs> now. Like, I feel like that could have been the climax of the season instead of I can't remember the actual climax of the season. I think it was like the the final Vi fight that was happening or whatever. Right. But I feel like the missile launch could have been like the perfect climax and then like the falling, you know, falling action could have been like the aftermath of it. Mm-hmm. And then that could set up season two, which I mean, Riot did confirm a season two, like the sec, I think a day after the the third part was released. Yeah, it was pretty quick. Game. It was pretty quick. Yeah. So no dates have been well, dropped I'm at upset. all, but. With an ending like that, you kind of need a season two, which I mean, another show had an ending similar to that that we're gonna talk about ah. that has no season two coming. So. Oh, that shit I canned. Okay, uh, so the, the animation was really good. Yeah, I I hate to be this guy, but I actually like Imagine Dragons, and so Misery I dig. Yeah, uh, I I don't know. I think I went into it wanting to hate the theme song, but I actually loved I it. I wanted to yeah. hate it so yeah. bad. It's on. It's like on my rotation now. Mm-hmm. Oh really? Yeah, a, that was a playlist play song yes, for Jerry. Yes, I play it now. But is I, it in your anime songs. But playlist? you know that I'm like a. I don't know. I'm. I am like an imagined. I. I think I consider myself an Imagine Dragons fan. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I. I, mean, I like all their like other the music. I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't really know. Uh, pretty much all their popular songs I've enjoyed. Um, I especially like that one that was like. Uh, y'all remember that one that was like thunder? Feel the thunder. Lightning and the thunder. Every, everyone knows that song. <laughs> Bro, I used to play the shit out of that song. That's just, that's fine. Hey, do you know that song that got played so much on the radio that no human could have ever missed it? Wait, Thunder or someone could have... I could understand if I said Radioactive because that one did get overplayed. But Thunder didn't get as much play as... <laughs> Well, not, think, as, not as radioactive. Radioactive, I think radioactive was, radioactive was yeah, like, radioactive was yeah, like if you say Man yeah. Dragons, people probably immediately think radioactive. So I, radioactive. I think there's probably some listeners that were like, oh, he's about to sing radioactive. And then I sung Thunder. I kind of like, thought you were going to sing yeah. radioactive. <laughs> See? I did, uh, yeah. See? I think See? Um, it was, was kind of funny, too. It was <laughs> it's kind of funny, too, because Riot, uh, uh, Imagine Dragons has worked with Riot in the past of like doing their... League of Legends cinematics with their music in the background. Oh, um, and so and I think they've made a song specifically for League of Legends Worlds uh, World Championship like one year. So can it was kind of cool to see that. I get the, the one thing though with the music, can though, you, there was like, can you sing it for us, David? Oh, yeah. It goes, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> it goes, uh, <laughs> I'm let, waking let me, up. Wait, wait. I gotta got get the key. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, but no, I think um, oh, I think the, 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 the one thing I want to echo with that yeah, that Kenny said. So, so okay, good. let's hear. I think this is probably the best 3D animated. It's not an anime, but it's you know, not it, anime. Anime inspired, anime styled, whatever you. Probably want to call one of it. the best 3D animated cartoons I've ever seen. Oh yeah, um, I love the art style. I don't. I want to say it is. I I don't know if there's something better. That looks better. Yeah, it I mean, was it was so visually beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and um, like all of the different like um, uh, like spark effects after like or like the the gas effects from like mm-hmm. just movement from the characters. Oh, like, actually, one of my one of my biggest gripes is that I think they learned how to make really good smoke effects and so so many smoke effects are in this fucking show. <laughs> Wait, that's such a good... There's so many smoke <laughs> there, effects. There are a lot. There are okay, a lot. additionally... Every character smokes. There's mist everywhere. There's so many fucking smoke effects. They also loved fucking uh, slow motion for no reason. I thought that was a, kind of annoying. There was a lot of... To a point where, like, I was like, is Zack Snyder directing this shit? What the fuck? Everything's in slow motion, dog. Slow motion's <laughs> cool, Jimmy. Cool, I mean, you slow it, motion. I, it works in some scenes. I was just... I think I was just disappointed that, like, every episode there was smoke and there was slow motion. Like, every yeah, episode really? had to have... And we heard hell. Misery. <laughs> and we heard Misery. Well, I mean, that was the opening song. Game. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, but actually... Like, they, it just play No, wait! In the <laughs> there episode. were a lot... Yeah. There was a lot of random pop songs. What yeah. the fuck was that? Is it, it, is this James Gunn directing this? God damn it. No, I'm just... That's, that's what I was going to say. Like, there was, like, s- certain scenes that played and, like, a song would just randomly play and it'd be, like, yeah, a mini like, music that? video. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't think I like this. I mean, I get, like, what they're trying to do, like, the aesthetic right. of it because it, it is kind of, like, a league thing. 
with their oh. trailers and stuff. Just like action happening, and there's like pop music playing oh. and like their trailers and stuff. But I feel like in a show, as a non league person, and- I didn't get it. I, it didn't make yeah. like I was confused when that would happen. So I, would I be think like, the what? most jarring one was whenever it was just Vi and Caitlyn going down the elevator. And that, oh that my was the god! Whole thing. That was the, yeah. They played the mute. There was like a pop yeah, song like, for that, and I was like, "You're like, yeah, it's, it's just them going down the elevator and walking to the bar." And I was like, "What? What is going on?" Okay, but wait, wait, can I ask you guys favorite characters? Did you guys have a favorite character of the show? Vi, maybe Vi. Actually, Yuri Lowenthal, who died, who died so. in like episode one or two, something or episode three, I guess. Yeah. Rip um, Yuri Lowenthal. I I felt like Vi was my favorite. Um, yeah, she was just I, the I most. She was just the most well developed. Oh, I think she got actually, a lot of attention. My favorite character was Fiddlesticks. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, what the floor. fuck? What was wrong with that? <laughs> Why was just, Fiddlesticks? Honestly, yeah. I only signed up to watch this for fucking Fiddlesticks. For Fiddlesticks. I don't know. What if he's it? not in what's season that two, little, be what's that little uh, what's oh, that little dude's name? Uh, the one that uh, Heimerdinger. Uh, yeah, Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger. He was an okay replacement for Fiddlesticks. I accept a little bit of Heimerdinger when I don't get Fiddlesticks. Okay, right. Heimerdinger helps, That's, but uh, Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger is pretty cool. Heimerdinger uh, gives okay. me a little bit of hope, but they but, they, cooked, uh, they cooked this character because they're like, you're too old, man. They they ages him real yeah, hard. They fucked. Yeah, him they up, did. Dog. Okay, Vi was my favorite, but I do feel like Caitlyn was more of like a waifu for me. Like I, I was like, damn, she's yeah, kind of cute. I feel like dog. people been people been horny for Caitlyn for. I years. was like, yeah, I was like, yeah. sheesh, bro. Oh my god, I was like, damn, damn. girl, <laughs> um, damn. I didn't know that we looked at women as sexual objects on this podcast. Oh, 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 I thought we were I more. I thought we were more you know, socially wearing, aware. Okay, but I'm not wearing a Marnie shirt right Kate, now. Kate, Caitlyn and Vi. Caitlyn and Vi. Caitlyn and Vi, smash. I think, it's, I think it's always been rumored that they were like they smash. Is that is that a thing? No, I'm not saying. I mean, I don't know. Okay. No, I'm kind of here for it. It very much showed that Caitlyn's into that dude that I forgot his name. Yeah, Jace. Like Jace. Jace. Jace is uh, such a fucking goober. What yeah. a good <laughs> character. What a uh, who is the character He's David? Goober. Who is the lead character that saves him? Is that another character? It was that. You talking about Victor? No, no, no! Like the one that does like the magic or whatever that saves him. Right? Oh, whatever the one that's did. like in the him and his mom. In, in the oh flashback. no, I don't know what the who that. I think that's was. yeah. I, I don't think that was a lead character. Even the, that it was, was um... fiddlesticks, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but fiddlesticks. the guy, uh, the bad guy for this show was made up too. He was not. He's not in the game. Yes. Which that kind of yes. surprised me. I looked that up afterwards because I I just presumed most of the leading characters were were going to be game characters, but no, he was. I can't even remember his name right now, but he was S- not Silco. Yeah, yeah S- Silco. Silco and like the the girl that Jace fucked. Mm-hmm. She's um, not in it the either. T- the tan skin. She's not a lead character. And her either. mom's not. It, I thought for her, sure her mom was oh, going to be a lead. Be. No, yeah, she's yeah, not I a lead character okay. either. So wow. that's right. Not only that, but the dude that protected them in the first three episodes when they were kids. Uh, he's not, not a lead uh, character either. Was there that- is spoilers. There is a rumor, there's speculation that he becomes a character that is a champion in League of Legends. Oh, oh. is there like the, a the, spec- the speculation is that Singe, who is like uh-huh. a scientist doing all those experiments, experiments on him, uh-huh. and he transforms into Warwick. Oh, okay. So, and there were like a lot of like random hints. Like Riot, they love Easter eggs. Let me look up hints. what I'm kind of curious. And what that there dude were, looks like, yeah, what does Warwick look Warwick? like? Warwick, he's like he's a werewolf. Oh, like motherfucker. oh that's but he's I mean, but he's he, he's from Zon. So, um, and he is. I think in his lore, he was worked on by Sin. He was created by Singed. Oh, so. That's like the rumor, but I can see it. I mean, that's still kind of cool. I mean, there's I'm about a... to say literally right here, the second picture is of him. Yeah, the what's guy that guy's name? Show? I can't remember his name, but uh, mm, I can't remember his name either. To me, this show really solidified oh, that Vander. Oh, Vander. 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 This show really solidified that Haley Seinfeld had a fucking good ass year last year. You know what I mean? Great year. She had a good year, dude. And that's oh, oh my god. She's still Spider Gwen in the in the new Spider Man coming up this year. And she's now Kate yeah. Bishop in the live action, all of Marvel yeah. Cinematic Projects. She's, she's gonna be Vi. She's gonna be Vi Arcane. and all of Arcane, which is a huge role also. I mean, at this point, those are just big pro I mean, they're nerd she's projects though. She's clearly gonna be like the nerd. Oh, she's um uh the poet woman in on, on the uh that uh I think it's an Apple TV show that's really big. Elizabeth Oh really? I don't know. I haven't yeah. heard of it. 
Yeah, I, I mean, she was in something else. To me, she's just having a good year. But what she's turning into is like a nerd, a female nerd icon. Like all, like by the end of Haley Steinfeld's yeah, career, she's just like nerds are just going to be like head over heels for her. I'm. Oh yeah, she was also in Bumblebee. Yeah. Oh yeah, she yeah she was in the Transformers movie. She was in fucking. Yeah. She's animated Spider Man live action MCU Arcane. Like she honestly just needs to do a fucking anime now. At this point, yeah. I'm Dickinson. like Dickinson. She was in Dickinson. Dickinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, come on, Haley, let's go ahead and get you an anime at this point because... She's only 25? Oh, wow. yeah, she's young, dog. And, uh, yeah, she's killing the game. Kind of successful, yeah. Good, good job for her. Isn't she the one that also made... Uh, she made that flashlight song, right? <laughs> she, <laughs> she sung. I've been in the dark. Like, yeah. That was line. her first thing. I think her first thing was... I need no, to sing that. Was in, she was in. Uh, oh no! She was in True Grit. She, she also did True that Grit. song. Oh, True Grit when she was like a kid, right? Correct, she was like yeah. young and she did that. Yeah. Wait, what the fuck is True Grit? It's like a Bad remake. Damon, Jeff Bridges, Josh Brolin. It was a big what movie when yeah. it came out. Yeah. Yeah, she got um, a nomination for an Oscar for it. Um. Yeah, as like a little kid too, which was kind of fucking dope. I yeah. need her. Oh my god, she was in the old Ender's Game movie too. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that. Old. I say the word old. It's it's old now. It's almost ten years old. But there's an older Ender's Game movie too. I think there was an old old one. But oh yeah, yeah. The one really, in 2013, I think. Was she's like really the done movie. a lot of nerd projects at this point, which is kind of like, I mean, good I mean, for I her. Assume, I think she is like actually pretty nerdy. I I hope so. I mean, nerds are definitely going to be head over heels for her for the next ten years. Um, yeah, let's yeah, get her in an anime. Sure. Can we get Haley Steinfeld in the anime? How do we petition? Actually, can we get her on the podcast? No. I'm just, no uh, yeah, let, let me, let me reach out. Yeah. Well, let's let's DM her. Let's talk DM her. Some people that are much too famous, <laughs> Yeah, she might be know? a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we're here and she's here. Listen, if we the, if we had a million subscribers, she might she might oh. she might respond. If we had a million subs, I, she no, might I even think even if we had a million subscribers, she'd be like, no. Oh fuck me! <laughs> no, she's done interviews with like fucking E. You know what I mean? And nobody watches E Entertainment anymore. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, or, but he's Jerry got who? the connections. Yeah, what is that? You remember E Entertainment or whatever the fucking I, channel? I, I, I was, yeah. They hired Joel McHale to do the soup. <sighs> yeah, you know the soup. Come on, David. Um, you remember the soup? I want. I want her I, in an anime. Let's get I, her. I let's get Haley Steinfeld in like the next Ghibli movie or something. You know what I mean? Like the next oh, time they yeah, do like a big that. budget anime like uh, dub, they should get Haley to do a voice. That'd be sick. Yeah. She's awesome. So I'm here. Wait. For so it. what did you guys think of Jinx's character? Do you think she was like? Right? Do you think? Oh, I'm not. Because I think the show is trying to pick up on like, uh, like the theme of like, what not Stockholm syndrome, but like, just like uh, mental abuse. Edginess? I guess in some way. Ed- Edgy? Edgy? I think they were trying is to it, get the with, edge. With jinx? Were they trying? <laughs> was there was there etch- was there edginess with no. jinx? No. Edge. 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 Oh. Oh. Like, edginess. Yeah. Like the the end of a Wait, table you has an edge. Deeper? You huh? think it was just edgy? Bro, well, she was edgy as fuck to me. You know? Like I, I felt like, you know, edgy. I felt like she was appealing to a specific crowd, and it's the crowd that wears Harley Quinn t-shirts. Like that's that's the yeah. Jinx was appealing to a very specific lane of fandom. You know what I mean? <laughs> She's about to go start her own fucking suicide squad or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is all I could think about whenever I saw her. Yo, Kitty, what the fuck is that? I can't tell. Hey, wait, can't. let me. Let is me that just better. is that just sharp? Is that someone's back? No, it looks like sharp yeah. edges to me. That's what I'm thinking. No, 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 no. Oh, is that yeah. Edge from Final Fantasy IV? Oh, it's actually That's Edge. It's Edge. edge. It's oh, Edge. Man. You sick <laughs> bastard. It's oh, it's edge. Edge. Oh, here's the thing. She was like off-brand Harley Quinn to me. I mean, she she played yeah. to the same concept that Harley Quinn does as a storytelling device, and I think that they tried to give her some depth. By Vi ended up being the deeper and more well-written character, while Jinx came off as very like. Just inscrutable, just difficult, and not not really like well scripted. I especially hated that scene where she like punched the punching bag. I was like, "What the fuck are you doing, Jinx?" I was like, "Go home." Yeah. I was like, "Why is this like her her physical ability like skyrocketed? Like there was no yeah. What the I never, fuck? Like, I, didn't, like, I didn't like understand that because she just like woke up one day and was like, "Oh, surprise! I'm badass." I- at least yeah. Vi had Vi had a build up. You know, they they wrote her character to slowly get stronger over time. She was in prison. Yeah. She was able to practice train. There's like yeah, there's like mission there of training. Mm-hmm. Like with Jinx, she like tinkered. She built things, which they I mean that expanded when she was older. But then yeah. all like the physical prowess wasn't. It was just like here you go. Yeah. So I I was confused. By she that. also doesn't really have like the okay. So when you know 
Vander or whatever takes care of her, you know, and then Vi tries to go back for her after Vander dies. And then Silco just like slinks in and is like, I'll take care of you. There was like no reason for her to say yes. Like, I, like the, the actual, you know, the purpose or the, you were supposed to believe that, well, look, everybody was abusing her. Or like Mish, nobody was fucking abusing her. They were telling her to step away to step back. You're still young. You need to learn. Nobody was even mistreating her. Most people were yeah. actually quite kind to her and they were trying to take care of her and she totally I, misunderstood. And so she was like, yeah. Silco daddy, let me suck for your teat. Um, which is like, I think it was, I think it was like, um, because she was trying so hard to like, be like acknowledged as like powerful and like an actual contributing member of the group. And every right. time she tried, she just fucking failed. Yeah. And so I think, I mean, I do agree. I, cause Silco just came out of nowhere yeah. where she, she fits, she like saw him do this shit to Vander, her like dad. And yet she was still like, okay, okay, I'll go with you. Okay. I think she like she had to choose between him and Vi. And I understand like, and she was like, Vi is mad at me. I'm, I'm going to not mess with her. I understand that like after the time skip, because, you know, Vi goes to prison and Jinx is under the impression that that Vi oh left her on purpose. That wasn't in prison. Oh. But left her on purpose. You know what I mean? And then yeah. under the impression Vander's dead. So she clings to Silco for X number of years. I don't know how many years passed during the first time skip. But, you know, she clings to Silco for, for her needs to be met over the X number of years. So I understand later in the series when she has sort of a come to Jesus moment where she's like, do I choose Vi or Silco? There's like this... There, I understand that there's a little bit of narrative that would comprehend that I, as a viewer, would be able to go, Yeah, hey, I see why Jinx is having some emotional difficulty with this. Um, but I just think her initial decision seemed a little off center, and it kind of was just there to, I mean, it was just there to set up Jinx as a you know, an abused little child that turns into an abused adult who has to make tough emotional choices. But again, I think that she was a bit pan. I'm going to use the word pandering is what this type of character mm. is. It's a character that's created or established for certain types of audience members to feel connected to like, Oh, I was abused as a kid. I feel connected to, to, um, jinx. Like I love jinx. Now jinx is just like me. Um, and that's fine. I think there are certain ele like Harley Quinn. I mean, that's why Harley Quinn exists. She's that same type of archetype of character. Mm. Um, that has this sort of like, oh, it's a troubled abuse, you know, it's a troubled narrative of abuse, and I as an audience member feel a connection to that character. For me, personally, it doesn't connect with me as a, as a viewer. I was much more connected to Vi's struggle, where it came to protecting her little sister, it came to making tough choices that were in the betterment of people around her. I thought her struggle was a little bit more potent, um, and in the end, her choices she had to make were... were me as a viewer, I was like, okay, I'm invested in what Vi has to do because I would have to, I might see myself as a viewer in similar, obviously not saving the world or fighting bad guys, but in similar real life situations. I felt like her, her right. character was much, much more well scripted. Jinx's was a little bit more uh, further from reality, um, which is. But now, fine. can we talk about the best character? Go on. That would be Echo. Echo was Go. the best character in this show. I, like I loved Echo. every every second he was on screen. Whenever he was a little kid, whenever he was grown, I liked Echo the whole time. <laughs> Not once was I ever like, "Man, I don't want Echo to be on the screen anymore." And I cannot say that about every other character. So. He had a really good fight I, I, with. Uh, I do love Echo. His fight with yeah. Jinx in the I think it was in the back three episodes was really sick. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing we have to remember, guys. This show yeah. and X Arm came out in the same year. Wow. <laughs> this show and X Arm came out in the same. So, <laughs> inter historians are going to have. Biologically opposed yeah. <laughs> animation. Animation historians are going to have to look up back and be Actually like, gonna go how was. They're going to be like, how was 3D animation in the year 2021? They're going to pull up X Arm and fucking Arcane and be like, well, something something happened here. <laughs> same they're fucking year. Like, oh they're going to be like, God. wait a second. That, that other one's from 20 years before, right? No, nope, not a PS1 game, surprisingly. <laughs> um, uh, oh, God I, damn. I, I, I didn't know that. Apparently, Arcane set the world record as Netflix's highest rated series within a week of its premiere. What does that mean? So, what does the word rated mean in that context? Sorry. I'm, so, I'm like, like, the, like, the, like the top 10 on Netflix's like global, like whatever's top 10, it got to number one the quickest ever for a. Netflix premiere. Okay, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty spicy. Okay, I mean, I'm gonna say League is like cool. the most followed esports. Is it? Game it's, in the world. Is it the most it's, popular yeah. game in the world? Arguably, and most played game, right? I think I it has think the, so. the largest player base of any game. Yeah, yeah. 
So, I mean, release a show set in the universe of the largest video game in the world, and yeah, people are gonna watch it. I don't profit, know. I don't know what profit. else to say. Yeah. Profit, yeah. Yeah. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Profit. I don't know. Profit. They, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Netflix knew what they were doing. They put. I mean, it's the largest. Netflix is the largest streaming service in the world. League is the largest yeah. video game in the world. So they partnered together to make a good show. And surprise, people watched it. I don't know what else to say, but I mean, I'm happy. I mean, that's really impressive because I thought Squid Game had like probably set that record like right before Arcane, um, yeah, or had done so. something close to it. Although I think Squid Game took a little bit. Because oh, you're right. Squid was, Game had a buildup. Build of word of mouth. It was, right. Yeah. It was like out for Everybody a week or two watching. before it people watched it. It was like explosion all at once of like everyone starting to watch. Yeah, but it was like out for a while and then it happened. While Arcane's yeah. was like immediate when it dropped. Um, yeah. Okay, Arcane so yeah. Anything else about Arcane? I feel like here's my only. Let me get into my slight. It was a. It, the story was fine. The art and animation were the best thing about it by far. The art and animation yep. were absolutely a, a joy to Great watch. Music. There's no question about that to me. Yeah. I don't know if I fully understand why this was like enormous you know why did this get huge where like every reddit thread i was in would somehow devolve into hey you need to watch arcane for four weeks straight i don't really understand fully why it was that popular because i think that at its core it was a pretty like marvel level storytelling if that makes any sense like very uh mass appeal mass audience type of storytelling it really wasn't doing mm -hmm. and and it ended with like one of the worst endings i've ever seen for a first season yeah it's um, so aggravating honestly like and Jinx was just annoying enough to me as a lead character that I, I constantly wanted to just like not watch it when she was on screen. Um, and it's like, it was annoying. And obviously the little things like the slow-mo and the fucking music videos in the middle of the show take you a little bit out of the narrative experience. Um, mm -hmm. The story itself wasn't bad. You know, I think it was simple enough. Uh, I do think there were some like exposition things that as like someone who has no concept of what League is at all, I had to kind of read between the lines and I think maybe the creators kind of assumed maybe people were coming in with a little bit more knowledge. But for me, I, I don't know a damn thing about league. So I went in pretty much cold Turkey and uh, there was a couple things like the locations and why the two parts of Piltover or whatever, you know, one's in the shadows part and some of that stuff that was sort of just expected or implied or like how Vander saved the kids and you're like, okay, what did Vander save them from? What was this, the, you know, what was the conflict? Some of that with things that I guess are like big league of legends, lore aspects. Like there was a conflict between Piltover and blah, blah, blah. You know, um, that for me, I was just like, huh? But the, the creators clearly just presumed a lot of us knew, um, you could still read between the lines. It wasn't like so difficult that you couldn't follow it, but there were some times where I was like, huh? Um, but other than that, I mean, yeah, it was a, it was a cute show. And I think that, uh, it's definitely worth a watch if you're just a fan of animation in general. And I think that's why it deserves at least a little bit of buzz. It's like, if you like animation, mm -hmm. this is something that in 2021 you should... It's like Spider-Verse, but on TV. Like, that was the degree and caliber yeah. of animation that we got from the show. Was uh, that Spider-Verse level of 3D animation. And if every 3D show looked like Spider-Verse and Arcane, maybe there's some hope that we can get some really good 3D animated shows in the future. But... Yeah. I agree with all That's that. my only one complaint with the show. Um, but I did find it a little boring at times. And I think that was another part. Is there was some just draggy parts and the slow motion didn't help. But like I said, the Jinx boxing mm. bag scene that lasted like five minutes that I was like, I don't know why. I don't know what this is compelling yeah. me to do. or like If what? I remember correctly, doesn't she not beat Vi's record and then just gets pissed and blows it up? Yeah, that's yeah. No, that's that's how it ends. That's why I'm like, there, there were lots of little scenes like that that I was just like, like, why did we need to watch Jace fuck that one girl? Like, that seemed totally irrelevant. Well, it see, it's symbolizing so how and... how fucking alpha Jace is. I guess so. Yeah, really? Jace, Jace the whole was. show is about showing how alpha Jace <laughs> yeah, is. Actually, yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, you Jace know, is just yeah. an so there was, I had enough complaints alpha. that I, I don't think this is, like, the perfect show, but it was fun enough and worthwhile enough that, you know, throwing it on over a weekend mm -hmm. or something is a great... Great time. And again, yeah. at least if you don't, if everything else is whatever about it, you can, the, I don't think anyone who likes animation won't at least enjoy the animation of it because it was just mm. gorgeous. It was gorgeous. I mean, really yeah. well, really well animated, but any follow up thoughts, boys, conclusions to arcane? Uh, no, you said everything. I just, I did want to add that 
Uh, fiddle six will be in season two. Fiddle, we'll see fiddle six in season two. Yeah, he will come over from Noxus and he'll just just ult in. Yeah, what's you know, crazy like, is if you guys actually stayed after the credits on the last episode of Arcane. I don't know if you guys did. No, yeah, no. you know if you stay after the credits, you see a little piece of a uh, of hay fall and it. <laughs> <laughs> And you're like, and we all—I mean, all of us real fans knew that's when fiddlesticks, you know. Fiddlesticks, it's fiddlesticks. Yeah, it was a little. It was a little. Let's rate this. Let's rate this. Let's okay, rate. let's rate. Okay, boys, on three, two, one. What do you give it out of ten? I this give it a seven. Seven. That's. Uh, I did six point five. Why did you, why did you do it like that? I don't know. David's I did weird. It like he was this, like, like a normal. David person. was like. David was like, uh, one and a half. Um, no, no uh, what? I, I'm holding up seven fingers. What? I got to hold this. I gotta, what is he's got a? The, the, I, I gave it a seven too. See, David, I, I did a little lower, six point five, just because I. See, I'm putting my thumb up, so that's seven. All this right, is, average to me. Five, this is a show that's a little bit above average. You know, it's something that's definitely worth a watch. It's a lot of fun, even if you like. If you, I assume, if you really like League of Legends, this is probably even more fun for you. I don't know, David. Yeah. Do you feel like you were having? I don't know. For me, I I, I don't. Know. I enjoyed it because it was cool to see like. Like I was saying before, they they love their uh, Easter eggs. Oh yeah, and there's a good number of Easter eggs throughout the show, so that was really cool to, to like be in on and see. It didn't like make the overall uh, show better. It right. was just like a cool thing to to see. Like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, but gotcha. I do think if you hate Imagine Dragons, you don't watch this show. Yeah, you're. I mean, if you hate them already, you're gonna hate them more by the end of the show. I mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> there's a lot of Imagine Dragons. So. I there's actually an entire scene. Where there there are animated they're, they're, versions yeah. of they're yeah, the Imagine Dragons. Dragons themselves are in the show. As as Vi are. walks through the city and this fucking oh, silly, what a silly fucking that was a weird sequence. Um, great. So boys, right. let's hit the pivot and let's talk about the next show that all three of us did complete, and that was yep. the first part of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Six. So it's the first chunk of episodes for the sixth part of JoJo's. So this is going to be a little bit of spoilers for JoJo's Part 6, obviously, if you haven't watched these. Thir- it was it 12 or 13? I can't remember. Something like that. 13. 12? Uh, no, one of the two. Um, if you haven't watched 12. those, you should watch those. Additionally, if you obviously haven't watched the other JoJo's Parts, we might touch it. I mean, there's not really a... But there are some elements of the other JoJo's Parts that you might want to know before we might... Because if we talk about things like the Arrow or about Jotaro or, you know, there's little things. That Dio. We yeah. So, and yeah, Dio's involved in this season. Um. So, beside the point, we're going to talk about JoJo's. So, let's get into it, guys. What would you guys think? JoJo's Part 6, Part 1. Man. I, I love Rocky it. just... He can't... He just keeps topping himself in how fucking weird some of this shit is you know <laughs> whatever the amoeba or whatever the fuck oh, yeah. was a, a being now oh, Foo Fighters yeah yeah Foo Fighters is a stand made from single celled organism yeah I, I don't know yeah. that was super confusing and then it was just the girl then it was just a hot earlier. yeah it was a cute girl yeah it was the girl we met earlier I'm cool yeah. with it yeah. <laughs> not wasting a character design he was like ah oh, he's that one yeah this one looks I, cool. I love that David Productions is like they like own JoJo's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like they just had the whole aesthetic, the look of it just perfect at this point. So yeah. I was really excited to see it. Um, and just seeing like comparisons of like manga panels to the anime, it's just like they just take it and just expound upon it and just make it so much better. Yeah. Which yeah. is really cool. Um, I love Jolene. She's my new favorite JoJo. Jolene. Uh, so. And also the Joe Bros. Oh, and like um, Hermes. Oh, I love Hermes. Is my favorite. Hermes character. Costello, my man. Hermes Costello. She's pretty sick. Yeah, I just love how the stands themselves are just getting more and more complex. Like someone that controls gravity. Yeah, in a that was pretty sick. Well, I think Jump, there was Jumpin' one Jack Flash stand. was that his name? Yeah. Yeah. Jack Flash. I, think there was, uh. I think there was one stand that sort of made no goddamn sense. Oh, which um, which one? I actually oh, I wanted to hear that. I was kind of waiting to hear your, your take on this guy. Can you you know what? what who? I would say maybe weather report what? was just <laughs> too ridiculous because I, Kenny, I, I, is too Kenny, strong. what what is weather report's power? I'm still not sure. <laughs> well, he controls the weather, I think. But also, if all the air in the room is getting taken up, he can create astronaut suits out of the air yeah plus yeah. you know 
He can make it rain frogs. He can make it rain poison frogs from the sky. Yeah, those were <laughs> those were different. Um, also, he only whispers, so he has to get really close to you, you to speak to you. He's on his tippy toes. Yeah, and he only stands on his tippy toes. <laughs> also, what I, do, um was weather? Wasn't it like? Weather Report doesn't know his real name either right now because yeah, so he's dis- so he's he goes stand by his stand's name. So like, what yeah. the fuck was that? He is a stand. At this- I'm like, I don't know what this is. Also, who was the dude that just like stood up and walked out of the room? I hope we I hope we get to know who that is later because I was the also kid like brought them yeah, to the go. Emporio oh. brought them in there, and the he, one guy was just like, gotta go. <laughs> he looked, he looked <laughs> like the Apollo. Yeah, I was like, what is this guy doing? Um, Bro, also, Emporio wears, like, a baseball outfit for some reason. I guess he was playing oh, yeah. ball. His, I guess he was playing his ball, st- Ken. His stance weird, too, isn't it? It's like he, well, like, he can like see control the ghost. the ghost of things. Yeah. yeah, the ghost of things. Including, like, the ghost of the building or whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah so and, and ghost of it Kind of lets him object. flip into the other yeah. side of the of the world or whatever. Kind of weird. Um, but I guess it also gives him, like, eternal life, is that I think is what's implied, which is why he always looks like a little kid. Yeah, um, something like that. There's some that. sort of implication there that the, he's got some sort of... I think that, yeah, Emporio's power, I have a sneaking suspicion, is going to become very different by the end of this part. Yeah. Sometimes that happens, you know, like whenever, I don't know, Kakui no longer can shoot long distance. Yeah, I mean, or, you know. Jorno's power was... I don't even know how to fucking describe it. I mean, it was technically like healing things, but like it just devolved <sighs> into absurdity like you know what i mean yeah what i mean by the end of part five yes yeah like control over life yeah yeah life inject life into into objects or into things yeah yeah remember when you drink that pee though (laughs) you you turn into a little octopus full of pee i just don't a little uh guy i just the power is just iraqi is just mentally ill honestly that's uh, that's what i'm sorry i mean i just don't think he's no i think i think he just thinks of it's like the so villain creative. and then he thinks of how to kill it and then he's like uh whose power should this be i don't know he just might like be right. a dart at the board he might be he's right. like oh this is it's actually hermes's power this season you know? did like, start oh. off simple that the first person just shrunk it just shrunk people down which yeah. is a replicate mm-hmm. power right isn't that exactly what fucking uh, uh helicopter part- guy that uh fought him i can't what? think of the the yeah, no, part five. The guy in, uh, uh, the guy with the helicopters, whose name is escaping me. Helicopter, sorry, not more than one. Little Feet? Uh, that might be the name of the, of the bad guy, but he fought oh, a guy for, that shrunk. Oh, Formaggio. Yeah. For, Formaggio? Formaggio? No, the little guy. He also uh, just shrunk people? What's the, uh, what's the guy's name that had the helicopter stand? Why am I forgetting his the name? The one that danced? He was a Joe bro. And he has a stand yeah. that has, has, he's got a oh, helicopter. Oh, um, that's a uh, Narancha. Narancha, yeah. thank yeah, you. Aerosmith. Narancha yeah. fought a guy who could shrink him. That was a guy that he fought. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, in yeah, part, yeah. In part five. But this is just, listen, I just always go back to part three, okay? <laughs> they fought a guy who could de-age you, and Jotaro still just beat the shit out of him as a 10-year-old. Yeah, so I was honestly, like, that was, yeah, I mean, you kind of just have to remember. That- yeah, 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 like at, at some point it's just like Araki. He, that's why I love Jotaro because Jotaro's power is just that he beats the shit out of you. That's his power. His power is that he punches you really hard. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. You're and not wrong. Uh, he punches. Nobody else sort of does. You know, he do punch good. Yeah, I love how that's in part it. six like looks younger than before. Yeah, he just yeah. gets younger and younger with each part. He's uh, he's like sexy 40 ass, dude. Something now? Yeah, he's uh, no. I think he's supposed to be like sixty. No shot. It's twenty. It's two thousand and one. Uh, no, bro. He's, he's got to be, be like fifteen. He's got to be two thousand eleven. Oh, Jolie's like in his forties. Yeah, probably his forties. That's my guess. He was he was seventeen when he fought Dio and like eighty something. Very yeah. little in the in the first part. Yeah, he's supposed um, to be a high schooler in the yeah. first part. Okay, so two. yeah, this one was bonkers, but. Honestly, one of the I, like I couldn't stop watching. All I wanted to do was watch more. And far from the JoJo's course, when Weather Report dropped poisonous frogs on Father Pucci, and Pucci had to like squeeze next to a cell and count even numbers, I was like, "No, he counts prime, uh, prime numbers. Sorry, prime, prime number, number. not number. even. Whatever." I was like, "Damn!" But then he fucked it up halfway through, which was <laughs> this was guy. Like, 
He's he like, like the Oops. perfect mix between because he's a Dio fanatic, but he acts yeah. a lot like Kira to me. That's the kind of vibe that I got. I was like, Pucci's got some Kira elements to him, but he loves Dio. Yeah. So kind of a good baller mix of that stuff. Jolene just looked great in every scene. Um, I really thought maybe she was going to do some creative stuff with her stand power, uh, but then she just punched people also, which I thought was kind of an interesting, interesting take. No, she, there, Rocky. She, she made that she made that net over the water. And she ran a she ran along it. That was pretty cool. Yeah. How'd she beat the bad guys though, David? Oh, she beat the well, shit out of them. She pretty much just beat the shit out. Of yeah, I was like, I was like, oh damn, she's got like kind of a unique power. She might, you know. And I mean, yeah, she like the red. But, but, but she's a Joe Star though. She, so. so she just got punch. She's got hit him with a punch punch. But which, I, think, I didn't mind. I actually think it's fine. Part nine. I think he should just go ahead and come out and have the like the JoJo. Just be like their power is just that they punch. Like yeah, he like, has no it. extraneous power, nothing at all. It's just punching. That would actually be kind of cool, though. Kenny. And then, like, the other stands are just, like, bonkers, ridiculous. And you're yeah, like, and no, he, well. This guy shows up and just, like, gets all up on you. Just, like, <laughs> I'd be cool with oh, it. Oh, wait. Wait, we're doing, a, we're doing a poor job of this. We didn't even explain what part six is. Oh, fuck, dog. Whatever. Okay, see, so listen. We didn't listeners, even really explain real, real what Arcane quick. was. Whatever. We just... Arcane's League of Legends game made it to a show. Uh, part six, JoJo's, you know, Jolene yeah, Cujo. Made it to a show. Taro's <laughs> daughter. Fiddle put sticks. in jail. Uh-oh. Fiddlesticks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Jolene's put in jail. She has. A, she gets a stand, which gives her magical abilities. She meets other prisoners. Oh yeah. How did she? She touched the, the arrow, uh, right? Someone. Uh, it was like. It was like a. It was in the. It was, it was, it was a, a shard. It there was, was a piece shard. of the arrow that was in the locket. Yeah, that her dad sent her. Yes. This makes and no it, sense, it, though. She's Jotaro's child. She, she should have just, just had one. Have yeah. 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 I don't. Really I think it like. I think the arrow like force activates. This it game. does. So it, it could does. have like activated oh, later for her, but it's uh, just, yeah, okay. the it's arrow pushes you to to. We we know this from part four and five actually that yeah. the arrow will force a stand if you if you have the ability to have it. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I'd imagine Jolene's would have activated at that age, but because she's already supposed to be oh, what, yeah. like eighteen or something. She yeah, she's eighteen. She's eighteen, I think, at the start of the show. Um, but. Yes, she's in prison, and now she has to kind of fight her way out. That's kind of the... I mean, she's in prison in America, which is also pretty fucking funny, honestly. In fucking Florida. Florida, yeah. So that's kind of funny. Um, and yeah, there's... Yeah, um, <laughs> he had to put him in Florida so that he could explain where the report's power... <laughs> the frog. He put... What if that... Kenny, what if that was it? What if he was like, fuck, I really want to drop poison frogs. The only way it's going to make sense is in Florida, so I'm just going to... That's where this is set. That's all it was. Um... Yeah, I doubt it. I don't know. What do you? I think we've cut. I mean, David production animation wise, I felt like this was pretty standard for them. You know, nothing yeah. super spectacular, but nothing looked bad. Um, and the music was great. I felt like the opening song was a lot of fun. It's not the best. Oh, I listen. Opening, I listen to it. I listen to it every. But time. I didn't skip it. it. Yeah, so it was good. still good. Um, yeah, and the know. ending song, which was just a a fucking um. Oh, what's her name? Uh. B- Oh, it was yeah, not, yeah. Not Bucky. Yeah, I mean, if you're uh, familiar with JoJo's, you know they just pick like any. Um, they just pick random American music and play it as any song. song yeah. So, what like Duffy, 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 Duffy was the oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know. I just I I am nothing but excited for more of this season because I am kind of bummed that we're not just getting it continuously like we have with the last two parts where they just yeah. kind of rolled through it. You know, it just came on every day for a year, pretty much. Um. No, not every day, every week for a year, which I liked that when we got part four and part five. This time around, we're getting it kind of in segments, which part three, we actually kind of got that as well. I know a lot of people listening mm-hmm. might not have watched part three as it was airing, but part three aired like in segments. There was like two cores that aired. Then there was like a like yep. a six or eight month break or something. And then we got like yep. two more cores of it. So uh, we're kind of getting the same treatment here for part six, although there's no real indication how many more parts it's going to take. But Using some simple math, if we got 13 episodes this time, most likely we're going to get two more chunks of 13, just because lengthwise it's about the same as part four and part five. So we'd imagine we're going to get around 40 episodes total for this part. So very exciting, though. I I hope that we get it all by the end of 2021. I hope they don't push like... It would really suck if they make us wait till like next December for 13 more, and then we don't get like the last 13 till like the summer after or something. That would be ass balls. I hope that we just get 13 more like in like mid, you know, in a couple months. That'd be nice. But 
Okay. I'm, Joe, just, I'm just learning some pretty fucked up stuff that happened to Duffy. Holy shit. Do, Jesus. David. What, the, what are you? Why are you? I, I David's down the Duffy. Page, he he went the down song, the Duffy rabbit hole. And then, yeah. Um, wow. Poor Duffy. Do we want to give Duffy or not? <laughs> shit. I called it Duffy. Do we want to give this a rating or do we want to wait until JoJo's part six is completely uh, Let's over? wait till it's all done. Okay. Let's wait till it's all done. So far, so good, though. If you haven't tuned in, check Still it out. Really. You guys need to check out those 13 episodes. Fully available on Netflix in multiple languages. Did you guys watch? I watched this thing where it was like all, you know, that part where Ermes, was it Ermes? I think it's Ermes. No, it's the first rat girl. Um, she's like carrying Jolene and she starts singing the Jolene song, you know, Jolene, Jolene. Yeah. Um, and in the Japanese dub, it's pretty clear. She's kind of singing the song, but if you listen to it, like a bunch of different languages, like some of the languages had to kind of cut the tune cause they didn't want to like get sued oh, wow. specifically yeah. the English dub, the it's literally delivered as like the fucking dub actress she literally goes like, Jolene, Jolene, Jolene. Like, she completely kills the tune of it because they were just afraid. I guess they didn't want to have to worry about. Why didn't they just change it with something else? So, like, do, like, another tune or something? I don't know. Why does it have to? I don't know. So they uh, just went with, like, they just went with, like, a standard-ass delivery of the words instead of her uh, singing. Interesting it. choice. Yeah, but okay. most of the other dubs kind of kept the tune, I guess, less strict licensing issues that they might run into yeah. i don't know would have isn't that dolly parton song would have dolly parton been mad if jojo's part sit you know what like would she have sued them i don't know could they have just maybe, reached out to her people maybe like, i mean copyrights copy like dmcas and stuff like that i mean it's no that's true laughing matter so it might be an expensive song too to to get the rights to but it's fucking netflix they can get goddamn God damn. Same thing with like I all mean, the- if it's money that they don't gotta spend, I mean they're gonna save it, you know. In this Same economy, thing. Jerry. I mean, we know, but like with they like we didn't get any like all the stand yeah. names got changed pretty much for this yeah. season, so yeah. we didn't get any. I mean, I don't think the the sub or dub kept any of the original names because of the all, all because of copyright issues. So yeah, I mean, yeah. they, well, the the Japanese voice actors they say it. Yeah, like, if you're the, watching the, it, the sub, sub titles yeah. change it to like FF, like F fighters, or I think it's just FF. It's just the FF. Fighters. They just put yeah. FF in the subtitles, but um, they often just said FF too. Yeah, so it's whatevs. Mm. Um, all right, JoJo's part six. Keep watching, yeah. you guys. Really tuning. good, really good so far. Let's uh, we, let's we, we we should probably just one last thing. We should probably. We're probably will be getting part two in like March. I think the rumor is like hope. every three months. I hope. So, hope we'll see maybe in March. There hasn't been anything announced yet, which is I think is weird. Yeah, hopefully yeah. we hear something in the next couple of weeks. But it's air- yeah. currently so I don't know if you guys know that are listening, but they put it worldwide on Netflix December first. But there is a channel in Japan that's now airing the episodes every week. They started airing them like the first week of January. So it's possible mm-hmm. that they're waiting for that airing of the show to complete before um, before putting the next part out. I'm not sure, but I guess we'll just kind of see as it comes along. But um, yeah. Okay. Super Crooks? Let's talk about Super Crooks. Uh, yeah. Kenny... Well, I guess, fuck, I, since I forgot the last two times. Kenny, can you tell us what Super Crooks is about, like, in brief? Super Crooks is about, like, some people all start getting superpowers. Um, but this story follows Johnny Bolt, who develops, like, an electrical power whenever he's a kid. He wants to be a superhero, but then, like, fucking accidentally kills everybody in a pool, I think. Yeah, that's what um, <clears throat> And then it's like, shit. But then he learns that he can actually just hack ATMs and decides to be a crook instead. Yeah, pretty much. Um, <sighs> and then status. eventually the show gets to where there's like this big heist, but... Yeah, like the back, which is the actual comic book that it adapted. Yeah, is which is really heist. good, I think. Yeah. I think the last four episodes are great. The heist was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So yeah, a little bit of background about this show. It's animated by Bones, which is a very popular Japanese anime studio. It's based off of a comic book that was published by an American imprint, but it was written by a guy who doesn't live in America. He lives in like Ireland or some shit. I think that's where he was born. Um, But he's well known as he also created the movies or the comic books, The Kingsman and Kick-Ass, which are two also pretty popular comic properties. And uh, he kind of has like his old universe of comics that actually exist in the same world, which are associated with the series Jupiter Ascending, which came out earlier this year on, or not this year, fuck, last year on Netflix also, but was swiftly canceled after one season. Um, So Super Crooks actually exists in the Jupiter Ascending world, like literally. Like the heroes from Jupiter Ascending like show up 
in the Super Crooks anime, uh, which mm. is mainly like the uh, I don't know what they I can't remember what they were called, but the floaty the Union guy or um, yeah, the Union of Justice or something. Yeah, like but that. what's interesting is that like all of that was like added. None of that is from the Super Crooks comic. They added all that for the anime because it. I, Mark Miller, I guess, always a plan for those two to kind of be in the same universe. But a lot of that stuff, the mainly the first seven episodes are all like a anime original prequel to the comic book, and then the last like four episodes adapts the comic book itself. So, what'd you guys think? <laughs> no, it's Jupiter's legacy. Sorry, not to be confused with Jupiter ascending that shitty. Oh Channing shit! Tatum Thank movie. you. The show with Cheney Tatum and Mila Kunis. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, that's part of the. Super what was it? Universe? Jupiter Legacy. Jupiter's Legacy. Kenny? Jupiter's, Jupiter's legacy. legacy. Thank you. Sorry, I said yes. And what? What's the name of that? The their like main hero. They're like Superman. The Praetorian. I know. I know. No, a, that's, that's uh, I know guy. someone that we know uh, actually voiced. That Superman character. Oh, the Utopian. That was his name. Utopian. The Utopian. And if you guys didn't know, or if you're listening right now, we actually interviewed the voice actor that portrayed the Utopian on Super Crooks. We interviewed him uh, quite a while ago now, Matthew David Rudd. He ended up portraying Utopian in Super Crooks, which is super cool. But Wait, Salamander? Utopian. Is that the same person? No, he played two characters. Oh, okay. okay. Matt played Salamander and Utopian. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's just what Netflix wanted. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. What would you guys think? David, you didn't finish it. I did not finish it. I got to, like, episode five or six is mm-hmm. when – I think that was when Johnny Bolt was, was getting together his team for the big heist. Right. Um, I mean, from the first episode to that part, it was all right. I was enjoying the show. Yeah. Um, I think my favorite parts were when – they did that first heist and they were like escaping away and all the superheroes were chasing them. Yeah. I think that was like episode three or four, three to four. Yeah. Uh, I really liked that. And I, I then after that, it was like a very, I think episode five was like a very slow episode. And I think that's when I dropped it for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so there, I mean, there were slow moments. There were some very fast paced, exciting, cool moments to watch. Yeah. I think the animation overall was really well done. Bones does I, good. I, I enjoyed some of the voice acting, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, I, I think the powers were like pretty. Like, I was, I don't know. It's kind of hard nowadays to come up with like unique powers for characters, yeah. but they were all like, you know, typical. Like, you got Ice Man, you got Electro Man, you got Fire Guy. Got, but I really liked. Dude. I really liked the. Uh, was his name the Praetorian? That was his name, right? The guy yeah, who, like, he had a deck of cards, deck, and yeah. he would, like, fucking yeah. pull a card, and it would be, like, a random power. I thought that was a super cool concept. Yeah. And the Praetorian yeah, yeah. as a character was very dope. Uh, very dopely yeah. written character. I liked him. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, other than that, yeah, the first chunk is definitely kind of weak. It really gets good in the comic book part when they adapted it in the last couple episodes. And Yeah. Um, There's, like, like, episode nine. Yeah, I think it starts at episode 10. eight or nine. And uh, it's mainly because the big bad at that part... Uh, what's his name, Kenny? The the Beast or something? The yeah, bastard? the yeah, the bastard. The bastard. The bastard. Thank you. The main bad guy at this arc, the bastard. He's actually very cool. I love that he just blew people's heads up. That was his power. Um, and well, Johnny his power was he he had like psychic. It was a, yeah yeah, but he that all he would use it for generally <laughs> was <laughs> popping people's <laughs> brains, people's heads up, which yeah. was kind of fucking dope. Um. And I like the idea of, like, bad guys versus bad guys. I think that's kind of a cooler concept than worrying about, like, bad guys versus good guys. Johnny Bolt's team was kind of whatever. They're kind of forgettable. Johnny was probably the standout and the girl. I can't think of her name either. The girl that has, like, mirage powers. Also oh, turns Casey. out it was, like, a telekinetic power. Yeah. My baby? Yeah, my baby. Yeah. Um, The voice actor that plays Johnny in the Japanese dub is fantastic. It's Kenjiro Suda, who's one of the best voice actors in the industry today, in my opinion. I, I you know... Shout out to Matt for the work that he did on the English dub, but the Japanese dub yeah. of this show was incredible. The The Japanese voice actors they picked did a phenomenal job. And yeah, Bones knocked it out. The animation was really pretty. I don't remember there really being any scuffs in the animation. I thought it was really clean all the way through. I think the most terrible part was that the scripting in the prequel part was just weak. Um, it yeah, just and I feel like the pacing was bad. It also made them- they just stretched it out too much, and they just added... It also and- made them... Mm-hmm. They just seem so bumbling mm-hmm. and incapable. Then to them turn around and be like, you know, pull off this 
dope ass heist. I'm like, wait, yeah. it just they literally like broke into the museum and like got the helmet out of the glass and expected yeah. that to be the real helmet and shit. You know, like it was just yeah, they just seemed so bumbling and then like they only got caught then because Praetorian had to shit. Yeah. And it was like that was the setup. That was like literally the setup, Kitty. They're like Praetorian stayed behind because he was taking a dump, and I was like, "Yeah, what the fuck?" I was like, "Okay." Um, uh, you thought of a better reason? Like, yeah. I just yeah, the shit. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I felt like all the scripting they had to do to kind of set up the prequel. I think there was intention to make the prequel make us care more about the finale. It just didn't. The finale could have existed as like a mini series or even like an animated film. And I yeah. would have actually loved it. I think it would have been fantastic if they had just done the finale part. Hell, if they had just yeah. created the, like, Johnny Bolt flashback from episode one, used that intertwined into the finale part, that would have been enough for me. All the in-between, the mini heists that they included, the fights with the Praetorian beforehand, really didn't do mm -hmm. much for me. Although I did like the fight. I did like the fight between Johnny Bolt and the Praetorian in that parking lot after the very yeah. first heist. I thought it was a cool fight, but I... Uh, it, the second fight with Praetorian that was like in the headquarters or whatever, not as good of a fight, I don't think, and not as spectacular. Um, was that did, uh, was that in the comic book part? That, no, that no, fight, the second no, fight? neither of those fights were. No, those were both yeah. prequel stuff. So I did like what they did with the gladiator, though. I think he was funny incredible, as shit. incredible, He's so, incredible. The fact that he does it like right on planes or whatever was so oh, funny. Oh my god! Okay, yeah, that was some prequel content I liked. Made me yeah. care about Gladiator or, more. Or whatever, yeah. Whatever Casey, like, made him believe that he was saving the, the other... fish people, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Bro. I was like, oh my god. Gladiator was kind of heat. No no cap. And the fact that he was Gladiator. like... Uh, he uh, was, like, doing things with Praetorian or whatever. I don't know. There was just... It was just like... I mean, he wasn't, but, like, he was accused of or whatever. I don't know. There was just good... Yep. Gladiator was cool, but, again, a lot of Gladiator's, like, shining moments come in that back four episodes oh, where yeah. he's, like with the team you know what i mean like that's when i yeah. was like oh okay but i did I love yeah. i liked him sitting on top of the fucking plane i liked when he got attacked by the two guys that can ge regenerate and he fucking oh, falls yeah. off i mean i thought there was some really cool cool fight that whole plane fight was really cool um yep. to break out i can't remember that guy's name the magnetic guy magneto guy um who uh he would tk tk telekinesis T TK. oh that was literally his name but he yeah yeah mm. But I yeah I, I also like I liked the regenerating guys they were funny the whole time yeah uh, Johnny Bolt obviously what great. the the yeah. big one ended up being like a fucking neuro or a physicist or yeah. whatever I was, was like, like actually a physicist I was like okay uh, after their fucking faulty ass presentation he had to take a massive dump to hold them off that was actually pretty it was, yeah what's with the show and shitting yeah there was a second massive dump involved David. Uh, later in the show, <laughs> yeah, that, that did happen. Well, I know, I gotta watch. Now yeah. I gotta watch. You gotta watch the end to see the second massive dump, dude. Massive legend here. Uh, overall, this was super bog standard, and it just felt very comic booky. I think the animation was cool, but I don't, I don't know how yeah. else to say. This is I like love the opening song. Uh, the opening song oh, super cool animation in the opening too. I forgot about that. Yes, the yeah, dancing. Oh, oh. Yes. Oh, was... but then the ending kind of trash, wasn't it? I remember it not being good. I. It was. It's not memorable. Yeah, right? I don't remember how. It went. I remember it being pretty bad, and I remember wanting to just get to the next episode every time it would play. I'd be like, "This, come on, come on." Yeah. Um. Yeah. But the opening was sick. Uh. Yeah. That's it, boys. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Other yeah I, mean, Super Girl? Say, I mean, that was simple. If I were to rate yeah. it because it's over now, I'd give it a six out of ten. It's just the back half makes it a little bit better. It, like it was more watchable once you get to like episode nine. And that really improved the show overall for me enough that it's not like a five. Like it would have been a five, but then it was like a six because of that. So which kind of sucks that you have to like watch nine episodes to get to the good part. Yeah, that, that's I hate that's it. Already when it like I hate it when like it four hours, of, like like three to four hours of content. Kenny, if you were to rate it, what would you give it, dog? It sucks. Yeah, because yeah, the last four episodes I couldn't stop watching. Yeah, great. Right. I just, I, I, they were like, oh, really good. The heist is going off. Like, and I like heist movies. Like, I also yeah. loved the, the little wrinkle that was like, they all wore costumes that were oh, in that picture incredible. with, yeah, with David, Salamander. One of the heist, like, big points is that, yeah, that was super cool. I liked it. They framed the Salamander. They framed Salamander in a really cool way. Mm -hmm. done the heist. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's because they all wear these goofy ass costumes. 
And you don't really know why until the very end, essentially. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And that's a cool wrinkle to, yeah. you know, any heist movie is like, oh, here's here's why. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, it all. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd yeah. probably give it like a six or seven out of ten. Yeah. Six. Yeah. I go for a six. Yeah. I like it. Okay. I did. And and it was I, a, it's a quick series. I like. went and I read the whole comic book right after I read watched the ending because I was curious what they adapted of it. And it really it's just is one volume, right? It's like yeah, it's, it's like, like a one collected. Four, four it's like issues. four issues of a comic book. If you guys mm-hmm. know what that is, listening, but um, it's yeah, it's a quick read. Um, they adapted the comic book like panel for panel. It's just wild because Bones' style is just so drastically different than the comic book style. So it's mm-hmm. really weird to like look at a panel and look at it in the style of what the comic book artist did, and then look at what Bones did with that panel. Because it just shows how, I don't know, it just shows the creativity that goes into some of that stuff. Because generally with American comic books, when you adapt them, they really try almost too hard to like keep the comic book style. Sometimes it can even look a little bit like blocky when they do that. It doesn't really work in animation sometimes. So it's really cool to think that the Japanese animators, they sat down, they looked at this comic book, they were kind of able to completely restylize, but then still match all of the panels and uh, still keep it. I don't know. Maybe it's just from years of doing manga adaptations that they've just gotten right. the swing of this sort of stylization. But it really looked cool to be able to set the comic book up and go like, wow, like this is a really cool straight across that they did for this series. So, um, yeah, well, I'll definitely I'll check it out. I mean, I only have a few more episodes to finish. So, yeah, yeah, I'll finish it up. It's the good ones, too. I'll give it a try. I mean, I'm going to watch that over okay. zero. We're a little over an hour in, guys. Let's do it. Let's talk about live action Cowboy Bebop. Let's talk about Cowboy Shitbox, where <laughs> this show is all style, no substance. Yeah. So for those of you who may not know what Cowboy Bebop is, Cowboy Bebop is about one of our main characters. His name is Spike, and you know he's a he's a vigilante. You know he's a bounty hunter, a bounty and hunter. he goes and uh, you know he goes and hunts bounties with his partner Jet. Mm-hmm. Eventually, Faye joins the crew. And, you know, it's kind of just following them, hunting bounties and dealing with shit in space. Yep. And whoever wrote the script should never write a script ever again. Yeah. Because that script is dog shit. I don't know who, like, the interpretation of some of the characters was just, like, so unbelievably off. Yeah. First of all, Vicious is the worst I think he got the worst. Well, they just character. ruined him. I mean, they just, they just, it's hey, not, it's not vicious. vicious. They wrote a new <laughs> villain and just threw the name vicious on him. That's what they did. It's, yeah. It just wasn't at all his character. The um, character so. has the code name vicious for one reason. And that's because he is vicious, right? His whole character aspect is he doesn't talk very much. He just sort of kills people whenever they tell him to kill people. It, period. That's all he does. And he uses samurai swords. That's his thing. He's a samurai guy. And none of that is in this show. He is none of those things. So let's cast a white guy to be like an aggressive, over-talkative mob boss, throw a white ro- wig on him, show off his scrawny-ass arms every chance you have, and let him just throw a fucking palpable shit every time he's on screen. Like... God, he was worthless. Absolutely worthless. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know if it was like the direction that the producers told him to go or, or like the director or something. But it had like, to have been. In, in the anime, <clears throat> Vicious doesn't really have like a character. Like he's just more yeah. of an antagonist to Spike. So, I mean, I guess it makes sense that like, hey, we're casting a human. We want this person to like act. We want Vicious to be a bigger character. Let's like give him all these scenes. And like every time there was a Vicious scene, it was just so hard to watch it's unbearable. because, like, like nothing against the actor. I just thought his acting in that role was not good. Yeah. So it just made it cringe to watch it every time. Yeah. yeah. It's, there's a difference between what, um, what's the guy's name that played Jet? Uh, oh, um, Mustafa, Shakir. Mustafa Shakir. Mustafa Shakir. There's a big difference between. I I am almost certain that the directors gave Mustafa and the guy who played Vicious, the same sort of direction. They clearly wanted this show to be a little hammy. They wanted it to really ham up the the fact that it was a live-action anime. They wanted to get into that role. Mustafa took the direction correctly. 
That's how you take the direction. He hammed up every moment, but he made it believable. He grounded those moments. He delivered the lines right. He knew when he was trying to do something right, and he looked at the camera. He he moved and sounded and felt like a grounded, real-life version of Jet from the anime. Vicious heard the same direction. They were like, all right, ham it up. And he was like, oh, I'm going to fucking, I'm about to nail this shit. Woo! You know, like, he just, like, fucking, like, smoked it. He, like, popped a perk and, like, just went to town and was like, woo! I'm going to sweat so much, you motherfucker, and have the nastiest, grimiest gray hair you've ever seen. Woo! You know, um, I just don't. Oh, he was unbearable shit. to watch. I mean, he was just, I, someone should have stopped him and said, listen, we need to tone it down. We need to change the direction. We need, like, whoever was filming this, I, I, whoever filmed this shouldn't have sat there and been like, pretty good performance, bud. Pretty good. Because that's what they did. Someone took this, I mean, they went to the cutting room, and they it, said... It, it, went, it went through post-edit, it went, it went through... Everyone, everyone like, watched that and was like... Whoever wrote this, I mean, like, just the way Vicious was written was yeah. just ap- absolute yeah. batshit terrible. Yeah. I think like, the worst scene, villain of there, this whole show was a writing, for yeah. sure. The worst yeah, villain. The, there's that scene where they're like, kill her, and Vicious would just go, okay, play him. Like, play, that's play. it. That's Vicious. That's what he does, right? I, Even if you're making him use guns, whatever, he blams her. Here's vicious the, is vicious. That's his thing. Right. Okay, so here's the thing about live action. Uh, we have to have this conversation, though, to have to talk about Kobe Bob. When someone takes a property that exists and decides to adapt it to another medium, whether that be a comic book that becomes a movie, a movie that becomes a television show, a television show that becomes a book, a book that becomes blah, 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 right? There's, there's really only two options, right? You either take the, the thing and you change it a little bit to make your version of it unique, right? To make it a different experience in the same sort of world or setting, or you do, you do it word for word. You just recreate it in the second medium word for word, right? And I think going into this series, the, the idea of just recreating Cowboy Bebop in live action word for word, there's just no reason to do that, right? Like, Right. No matter how many times you have to ask, like, no one sat down and was like, that needs to exist. Because it really doesn't need to exist. Like, there's no... So the only real option they had going into this was to try to take the world, the settings, the characters, elements of that series, and adapt them in a way that they created something unique and new and good. That would have been the end goal. So I think that there's ele- there, there are points in this show where you see that a little bit. You see that a little bit where they almost get it. They're like almost there. But whoever was the head writer, whoever was putting these scripts together, it's not that they like, they maybe didn't understand Cowboy Bebop super well. And maybe they just aren't the most, you know, they're just parts of their writing that were falling a little short. I think that if they had just pulled back just a little bit, you know, gotten rid of some, they're just some hand-fisted dialogue moments, some cheese. This show almost works. Like it almost gets there. Like, that, that's what I hated about this when I was watching is like, it's almost there. Mm. You know, there are elements that are working in this show, but it's just like, God. It, and I think they made the right choice. I think they needed to write their own story. I don't think anyone yeah. has any reason or desire to watch exactly what was in the anime in live action. Uh, there's no reason yeah. for it. It doesn't do anything technically that would have, you know what I mean? Like. When I think of like the Speed Racer live action, that was super cool because they were able to do things for the show that the old animation just really wasn't able to accomplish to make it very cool and exciting and visually appealing. There was some super cool stuff they were able to do there. And they were actually, if you go back and watch that movie, it's really a pretty good movie. Better than it had any right to be. Then you've got Dragon Ball Evolution where it's like, why? The question on everyone's yeah. mind. But on top of that, if they wanted to write their own thing, why did it suck so bad? Who wrote that? Why did it exist? You know what I mean? Fine, let's make a live action Dragon Ball, but let's do something that's cool and unique and special and well written and still tells a story that's thematically similar to the original Thor story. That's where Bebop fails. Is that it? Just doesn't it? It all it's damn near the closest that I think I've seen live live action anime get. And I hate that that's yeah. what it is. Is that it's so close, but it because it was so close, it still failed so hard. Um, yeah, it still just I think didn't get I, there. I think for it to like for any adaptation to be successful, like the people that are like in those leadership roles, like the director, producer, head writer, like they need to have like a perfect grasp of 
the sh- the of the anime that they're adapting, the characters, their right. motives. They need to un- fully understand all those things because fans, especially when they watch those adaptations, knowing those characters, will be able to pick up the- on those things really easily. Like we all look at these characters in the Cowboy Bebop live action mm-hmm. and can instantly tell, okay, these they don't. They have absolutely no idea the motives of these characters, what these characters want to accomplish, their personalities, blah, blah, blah. And so, like, I it makes me worried for One Piece's live action yeah. adaptation because that's One Piece itself is even way more absurd yeah. in its universe than Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop is kind of rooted, it's just in space. Yeah. But and it, yeah. that's why it's, it's kind of kind of worrisome to see what they're going to do. Here's the, the one big sharp contrast is that with Bebop's live action, none of the team behind it has really, at least, was never very vocal. Even John Cho admitted he, really, he had never seen Bebop before he got cast, right? The Damn. only big difference is that the, the head writer of the One Piece live action is a lifetime fan of the series. So at the very right. least... He Which sh- is awful. And the creative the like main the executive producer i think or director he has been cataloging during the pandemic he's read been reading the entirety of the manga and been posting about it on his instagram which another okay cool so the head creative director and the head writer are both big fans surprise and then they go and cast fans of the show all of these actors have admitted that they are fans of this series uh, the Nami mm-hmm. actor, especially, literally has like internet proof that she's like a lifetime fan because on her personal account, she like posted a photo of Nami like six years ago or something. So it's like yeah. you've got actors that actually care about the series, you've got writers that actually care about the series, you've got an, a head creative producer that cares about the series, and they've got a sh- they're getting handed, I believe, the rumors are that they're getting handed a shit ton of money to make these sh- this episode the show, but which makes sense. It's Jerry. the it's the most it is the oh, most his own personal money. Not Oda's personal. Oda's money. yen. It's will probably, it, it's, it's, probably ne- it's probably Netflix but, money. Steamrolling. But that will shit. it will it hurt even more if it's so terrible? Right. And here's the thing: is it like that's yeah. All oh. of these are the right. Bebop didn't have any of that. Most of the actors right. admitted they didn't know the show. So we know that it's bad. Most of like, creative producers, we, and it almost got there. That's what I'm trying to say: is that Bebop still with all of the shitty people behind the scenes? It was like almost there. You know what I mean? The style and the aesthetic at least was on on the point. Mustafa Shakir delivered arguably the best anime adaptation. I, I'm gonna no. I'm I not gonna say arguably. Love he Mustafa that is the best live action performance of an anime character ever. He, he I, was my prove favorite me character. wrong. Mustafa Shakir yeah. is the best live action anime performance ever. Only person that might have done but better or close. I'm uh, I'm gonna get slaughtered for this. Oh, Piccolo word. from Dragon Ball Z Evolutions. I oh man, I'm gonna get roasted for this. Whatever. I think Scarlett Johansson actually did a pretty good job as M- Motoko Kusanagi. Just I was that the best live action film? No. Was she the right person to play that character? Absolutely not. Did she actually do a pretty good job though? She kind of did. She kind of did. Damn, I, ne- I, I never watched live action. She. Ca- I mean, show. like fuck me for this, but like she she kind of did pretty good, and that's because she's just a really great actor. And yeah. she just knows what she's doing, and she can really play that sort of hardened action. She, again, and the script was even not that bad for that Ghost of the Shell live action movie. Uh, it, it fell apart in the back half because they tried to shoehorn in. They got so much shit about Scarlett Johansson not being an Asian woman, they shoehorned in this whole plot about her being an Asian woman in her, like, before she was placed Fire into her life. shell. Yeah, there was, like, this whole... It was really interesting. But all the stuff before that was actually... it's. It's actually visually pretty a, a pretty film as well. I don't think yeah. anyone will ever look back and be like, "Oh, that was." But I do think Scarlet was close uh, was close as well to pulling off a live action anime character. But I really think Mustafa Shakir uh, should be praised at the core of this show for being the closest to a live action anime character we've ever seen on TV um, so far. Wait, Jerry, I think you're forgetting someone. Wasn't Ooh. it Nat Wolf who played y- Light Nat! Yagami? Uh! Oh! Oh! <laughs> okay, the, but the one, the, the, the one thing that have... is L. <clears throat> okay, but the... Lakeith actually did. He was not the right guy to play that role, but actually did pretty good as well. Lakeith well, at yeah. least deserved a little bit of props because he nailed the mannerisms. He nailed the look. Well, he can't really nail the look because he's a black guy. Wait, but... Lakeith. 
the guy from Atlanta uh, was he played? Oh, L. I know who he is, but wait, what? he played L. He played what L. He played. L. Have you not seen no, the movie? He did it? Yeah. No way. He actually nailed the delivery and like the the like if if Lakeith were to have voiced L like in an anime version of it, he actually would have casted him right? as L. He actually would have probably killed it. And Willem Dafoe. Oh damn. Okay, maybe. Oh shit. Willem Dafoe was an incredible live action Ryuk. Like, no question about that either, actually. Um, Wait, damn. Willem Dafoe missing... was Ryuk? What is this? Oh, casting? Willem you Dafoe forget... nailed it, too. Incredible portrayal. You're forgetting one anime portrayal that I think may have been the best of all time. Go on. Ryan Reynolds as Detective Pikachu. Oh, that's a... No, Kenny, but that was supposed to be Danny DeVito, damn it. No. no. <laughs> Danny V. Okay, yeah, Cowboy Bebop was tough, guys. But I, but but, I mean, but two two things I wanted to praise about Cowboy Bebop. Okay, let's hear yep. it. The visuals and the music. Yeah, yeah. Visually, no question. It was always stunning. Whenever they would just like pan out and there'd be like space or like a lot of like the picturesque scenes of like all the settings of the planets that they yep. would go to or whatever. All that looked great. Yep. And the music was conducted by the same person that did music for the anime. Yep, Yoko Kono. And so. Obviously, the music well slapped. Done. Incredible. The music was so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, she died recently, right? Rest in peace. Oh. Did she really? Like, after doing this, the new one? Uh, someone from... Oh, no. The creator of Cowboy Bebop, I, I think, died. The creator uh, did? Uh, someone related to Cowboy Bebop died recently. <laughs> someone that was involved in the production. Yeah, Yoko uh, Kano, is, she's old. K- she's... K- K- oh, no, K- Keiko Nobumoto, who was the writer of Cowboy, the original writer of Cowboy Bebop, well, she died. one of the writers. She wasn't, like, the sole writer of the whole show. It just says writer of Cowboy Bebop. That's I just know. like, do you remember when that, uh, that article came out that was like, uh, writer of Naruto dies or some shit like that? And it was like... It was a guy who like Masashi screwed- Kishimoto died. <laughs> no, exactly. No, it was like it was like one guy who wrote like six episodes of the anime or something. Like had passed uh... away, and all the headlines were like sensationalizing the hell out of it. Like they're like writer of your childhood, fa-, you know. And everyone was like, "Oh, rest in peace, bro." And I was like, "What the fuck?" I was like, "This guy wrote like six episodes of like random scripting. Like he did nothing. Like his contribution to Naruto was like minuscule." Um, but oh, yeah, had- this this person, but this person wrote Asteroid Blues though, Jerry. I'll give it that. Oh, was it Keiko Nobumoto? Yeah, yeah, Keiko Nobumoto. She was the lead writer. She was the head writer of the show. So that means she didn't write every episode, but that means she led the writing room. So that, yeah. I mean, that is actually a big deal. She was definitely a big part of the show then at that level. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. definitely a big part of the show. Like she didn't create Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, Hajime, herself, but... Hajime Yatate is the creator of Cowboy Bebop. He was the one who conceptualized yeah. it. Um, mm. So pretty cool though. But yeah, shout out to uh, Yoko Kano. She did a great job with the music in the show. I think the death of this show was boiled down to the writing and the directing. And yep. if those two things... And some, and some character decisions. For some sure. of the actors were iffy. I mean... But I, if, if the directing and the writing is so bad already, you can't really blame the Yeah, actor, you can't, you yeah, you can't no, salvage no, They're just doing what they're being told yeah. to do. Because the reality yeah. of it is... I, uh, I guess some of the costuming, some people got... I don't think Spike's outfit looked really good. I think that they could have fixed yeah. it. I think Jets looked really good. I think Spikes looked a little goofy. A I little think if anybody starchy done, is the word I want to use. It just yeah, looked, you do the flipped up thing and it looks terrible. And yeah. you're like, okay, let's rethink this outfit. Yeah, starchy yeah. is the word I want to use. It just looked like his outfit was a little too stale. Like literally, like physically, like, like, like frozen. Like, yes, like him. it was like physical. Like, yeah, he can't move. They, in it. Yeah, they should have grimed it up a little bit. Like it didn't need to always yeah. be like fucking peachy clean every time he showed up. Um, Jets looked a lot better, I think, overall. Faze actually looked good. Yeah, it wasn't as, like, sexualized as her anime counterpart, but, like, I think she looked good yeah. in it. Um, I, yeah, I thought her outfit was, was awesome. I liked yeah. her as Amos So the, yeah. 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 Why, was Julia, why was Julia made a villain? I don't know. Who wrote that? I don't know. Who wrote Julia? And why'd they tell Ed to act Ooh. like that? Because I think the actress that was playing Ed was actually probably fine, but why tell the, like, why, when you get that shot of it, you say, okay, let's, let's run that back. Let's run it back. Let's run it back. We don't want to. <laughs> we're not going to leave it like that. They kept that in. They said, "Lay, let's I run it back." Know. I don't know. Maybe let's but run it. Maybe back. they meant to cut that, and they were like, "Whoops." Uh, cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Uh, <laughs> oh, you guys listen. Have... I just yeah. This was just hard. So many of the characters were just gored out of like just completely 
not the same characters from the anime, yeah. which is aggravating. But I just hate that it was so close. I just keep telling myself, like, this was so close to almost being... If there had just been a couple more passionate people involved in the project that loved Cowboy Bebop originally, if the right writers and the right directors had gotten a hold of this team and this money to do it to look like that, or, or you know, if the, the aesthetics department, the CGI department... You know, there was the right, there was some of the right team in there, but they just were mixed with people that were the wrong team for this show. And, yeah. uh, you know, I actually think John Cho did great too. I actually think the actors overall for the main four were not terrible choices either. Vicious mm. was terribly cast. I actually think the girl who played Julia was actually not a terrible casting choice either. Um, but no, yeah. I, I thought, thought she did a role. Yeah, fine. I think everyone did fine. It was really just vicious. That was the the glaring, like, absolute dog shit choice. Like, that was like, someone yeah. should be fired for that. Well, they did get fired because the show got canceled. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody yeah. got fired. Yeah, they all they, got fired. They, they, yeah, yeah, the whole shit got actually fucked me. Yeah, they, they canceled the whole thing. Um, so, I don't know. It, it's just tough. It's just tough because it just sets us up for, like, watching this fail just sets you up to know that, like, Less projects. I know that Netflix has already greenlit One Piece and Yu Yu Hakusho next for live action adaptations. I don't think those are going to get canceled, but it certainly sets us up for less live action anime to come. But yeah. I just think there's better things that would work in live action. To me, a show that would be that really should happen in live action is Berserk. I, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's too Game difficult. Style. It's too difficult to animate because of the high quality of artwork. It would be an absolute, yeah. you know, brain cell killer if it, if someone tried to animate that. Go full live if action. Netflix and go, got the rights to make a Witcher style, right? Like an episodic thing of Berserk. Go full no, in Game and, of Thrones. Yeah, style. think Wait, of who, the, who'd be who'd be cast as good. Think. Oh no, that's well, fuck me. Yeah, that's tough. Who to do you think, think Henry Cavill? <laughs> no, no, he has to be taller than Henry. Henry Cavill. Of current actors out in America right now. Like, he has to be like, fuck, he has to be like current... seven feet tall or some shit. Tom, no, who, who Tom can Hardy guts? can play Guts. No, I'm joking. Um... What is it? Tom Hardy's pretty short. That's not, that's I, know not he's short. I know he's short, but he kind of could look it. He's kind of got the look. Um, he kind of got the Guts look. and kind of. Wait, wait. Like, how, how, how tall is Tom Hardy? He's like 5'3 or something, I bet. He's 5'9? Like, he's so, five, nine? I'm yeah, taller than Tom he's, Hardy. Yeah, Tom, Tom Hardy's Hardy, tiny. Bro. You know who Tom Hardy could play, though? Who? Wolverine. Ooh, not a bad. Wait, what, but he's already he, he's now in the MCU. He's already as Venom. Saber though, right? No, he's also oh already God. in the MCU as Venom. No, no he's oh. not. No, he's in the the he's in the Venom verse. Wait, wait, okay? he, he could be alternate uh, universe. Uh, he got oh sent back. God. He got sent back. Oh my God. Okay, but who can play Griffith in live action? Fucking uh, who oh, play, who's Fimto? Timothy, who's Fimto? Timothy Chalamet. Oh, Timothy. <laughs> Timothy Chalamet is Fimto. <laughs> Timothy is Wait, what it's not, I'm, I'm trying to think of like the. the Actually, it's going to be Andrew Garfield as Guts and Timothy Chalamet as Spimto. Uh, <laughs> wait, Timothy Chalamet. I don't want to uh, watch. Andrew I don't want to Andrew Garfield's got to be like hella buff. No, yeah, get, like, get Andrew Garfield ripped. Because early Guts was kind of tiny looking, but he carried that big ass sword. Yeah. But then get him ripped by the end of the you know first season by the time he's like fully grown by the end of the. Uh, be- the main arc or whatever. Um, Wait, that, could, I would I, love it. I can't. But you Chris know what? Evans? Sorry, Berserk is one of those shows where or manga that I think there is some room there that it would work in live action. Th- these companies need to think more about that. What shows really yeah. would, w- when adapted to, like to live action, would be something that would really work? I think I've heard rumors that Gaunt's I know I've been reading it, so you guys. But I've heard rumors that Gaunt's is somewhere, somewhere in Hollywood. Someone has scripts. To potentially turn Gaunt into a Hollywood live action, I think that show would work in live action really well. You know, I don't think it's yeah, really. There's made. already a live action Gaunt movie. There is, yeah. I know they've made some in Japan, so I think it would be. I think that type of movie would work for Gaunt yeah. or even a TV show uh, for that because it's kind of got this episodic nature to it. It kind of deals in that sort of realm between sci-fi and and fantasy fiction. I just think when you go full shonen like One Piece and and Yu Yu Hakusho, and even to a degree like Dragon Ball, I just doesn't. I just don't see why we want hard. that. But um, yeah. there are shows that I think exist out there, as well as obviously there's grounded dramas that I think would make for really good live action adaptations when it comes to Hollywood. Um, imagine, I, I mean, they could make a live action Your Name. Do we need it? No. But you know what I mean. Those types of films could work really well, I think, in live action too. But 
Whatever. I, I think they. I think they are. They're making a live action of Comey can't communicate. Oh, in Japan. Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, it could be done, but it's a little goofy. It's a. Uh... But like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a Japan. Like um, one that would be great. Like a silent voice could easily be translated to a live action film, and with the right oh, team yeah. and directors yeah. behind it, I think you could make a really strong, thematic, good drama film with some really high quality actors. And I think you could elicit a very different emotional response that sometimes the anime movie and the manga couldn't. If you do it in a live action setting, you just have to adapt the movie. With that, you just adapt it straight across. You know, you pretty much do word for word. There's no reason to change that story because you can do yeah. something different with the filmography, the cinematography, the direction, the lighting, the acting that goes with that. Um, that would work mm. really cool as like a as a drama. Um, but yeah, I, I just don't sit around and think, hmm, I really would love to see Yu Yu Hakusho in live action. That would be really cool. Um, no, I don't. Li- live action Yu Gi Oh. Oh, fuck Yu-Gi-Oh! Me. No, Back see, Yu-Gi-Oh! if someone ever... No. Everybody shout out Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duels came no. out yesterday. You know what I mean? Like, like I've J- been playing so much oh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Summoning my blue eyes white dragon, okay? Is Sponsor it, me, Yu-Gi-Oh! Is it PC? Or is it uh, PlayStation? Or what, what do you play? Or what's yeah, you can get on your phone, too. Oh, dang. Okay, that's sick. Woo, okay. It looks really nice, too. I'll have to try it. But yeah, I just... Yeah. I don't know. Like, JJK. Nobody, like, JJK never needs to be made into a live action. There's no reason. That's a goofy-ass show. It should not be made into a live action. It works as an anime. It works as a manga. That's what JJK works as. There's no mm. room there, in my mind, for it to be, like, a live action. And it wouldn't improve the show in any way. You know, you wouldn't do anything that would really improve it. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I heard live I mean, action... I, I, would, I would watch a live action Jujutsu. I mean, yeah. I heard live action Gintama is really fucking great, though. There's a Japanese oh, live action yeah. Gintama. Supposedly, it's hilarious. It's supposedly really well done. Um, yeah, I think there's actually one show that I'd really like to see in live action. Um, Vampire Night. You know the story about Yuki Cross and the Cross Academy? <laughs> Adopted by the principal of the Cross Academy, Yuki Cross? <laughs> Kenny's, clear, to Kenny's the knowledge of, of Vampire Night continues to improve. Every time his ability to summarize it and give us... This is all what's found out in episode one, Jerry. It's just... Yeah. <laughs> Kenny is... Come seen, on, no, in, Kenny, Listen, Kenny, you're the biggest Vampire Night fan I know. No, I'm just... I am. All right, Kenny, Kenny, what would you rate Cowboy Bebop live action out of 10? Of what I saw of it? Four Vampire Nights out of 10. I, um, I would give it a four, too. Of what I, I saw, it it's like a solid three and a half, four, yeah. Maybe a little, maybe even like a solid three, actually. But it's pretty weird. I hope you guys know Jerry intentionally goes one to two points below <laughs> what me and David say every single time. It's, I actually, he's yeah. To, Let me rewrite. Re- so actually, average. Uh, I'd give Cowboy Bob a five out of ten, actually. It's pretty good. Oh, oh okay. okay. I'd give it a 4.5, actually. I'd give it, I'd give it a give three. It a I really would have given it a three before you guys said anything. But Yeah, that's what you're saying, bro. Fine, bro. fuck, it's a four. Okay, no, I'm <laughs> All right, so that was the main think, things we had to get through. Let's briefly what David? Oh, I was you. You're you're doing it. You're doing what I was going to do. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and talk about <laughs> Crunchyroll <laughs> Awards. Okay. Yeah. So wait, 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 wait. There's, there's, wait, there's, wait, there's, wait, there's wait, E0 part two. Yeah, exactly. What David said. Okay. Yeah. There was E Zero Part Two. There was Shaman King Part Two. I don't think any of us has watched anything me, more of E Zero. But Jerry has oh, watched some of our really going to talk about. Yeah, we're, we're, well, there's a couple more Netflix thing. shows we're going to quickly bust through. Uh, oh. Wait, are there? Well, we also have Comey and Comey Blue and Blue Period. And I thought we were talking about yeah. yeah. I mean, that's wrap up for whatever. Eden Zero, none of us watched the rest of it. The first half was dumb. If you want to watch our review on that, go watch our other episode. Why we'll, was the frog taking their clothes off I and turning them into statues? It's, yeah, why were there like five episodes of frog? Trying to sexually Hero assault Mashima's weird. women. Whatever. Uh, uh, I slept through those episodes. So I'm, Shaman King. Like, uh, Shaman King is more of the same. Uh, you know, the quality of the series isn't improving. It's just staying pretty bare minimum. They're just adapting the still story. Still like hella fast. Yeah, they're just adapting the story as fast as they can. And I mean, they're getting it out, but like nothing is particularly spectacular about it. I don't know what else to say. The third part, which actually I think just dropped um, as of this recording. Um, has my favorite arc in the manga, which is the uh, Oso Rezan Revoir arc, which is a big, it's like a long flashback arc about Yo and Anna's childhood. And it's one of the best, really well-written arc. I'm excited to watch it, but the reality of it is that I know the animation is just going to be 
meh. Like, this show has just been... I love the story of Shaman King, and the fights still look okay, but the animation overall is pretty subpar, and they're blazing through it. I mean, they're just moving full gas, because they have to get all 300 chapters into 52 episodes, so... Um, what I saw of the second half they dropped, though, was fine. I really like the episode where uh, Horo Horo has to go and save a bear. So if you guys, when you get to that one, you'll know. Um, it's just they a random... Over he just has though? to save a bear? Yes. <laughs> uh, Listen, as long as they play the original opening song... <laughs> David, at one point... That's all I care about. So if you guys remember the end of part one, they land in America, right? So most of yeah. part two, what they dropped, is most of their travels through America to the... Um, kind of the the goal point is what it is where the shaman yeah. tournament's going to take place um yeah. so they're traveling 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 at one point horo horo just leaves and he ends up with this like park ranger and saves a bear from like poachers um it's awesome i don't know how else to put it it's just awesome it's just awesome um it's one of my, when I, I remember reading it in the manga and i was like wait where's horo horo going and then for like a whole volume he's just like with this pose just, with a park and ranger. then like the next volume he just like walks back in like yo and them are like talking and horror horror is just like i'm back and they're like oh good to see you again and i was like what i was like what are you doing to all right he was right. i think i don't know it's funny it's he good was story. trying something out but in this part two we also got to meet jocko which is a good character uh, and lyserg so lyserg and jocko joined the crew in this part mm. i think uh and probably in the back i didn't finish part two but i think the back end is gonna have faust return as well good stuff i mean this jummy king's a lot of fun and I'm happy they're giving it a full Chocolo? version. What about Chocolo? That's his name. They they had to change his name, Kenny, because racism. Uh, um, <laughs> so in the yeah, original yeah. series, the character's name was Chocolove. At some point, people were like, wait, that's kind of racist. And so he mm -hmm. changed the name officially across all versions to Jocko is the name of the character now. He arrives yeah. in this part, but yes, they've removed the name Chocolove. They also digitally erased his lips from the manga. So all printings of the manga now don't have Jocko's original lips, which were also considered racist. And, uh, yeah, very racist. If you find the original version, his lips were there. And I think the original anime, the Japanese original anime, also had the lips, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, I believe the very first version of the original anime, they called him Chocolate. Wait, Jerry, Jerry, you're cutting out. Oh, sorry. Well, he's not cutting out. He's recording, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, it only cuts out oh, okay, for you guys. So I'm about to say, for I mean, mine, I still like it's to hear, fine. Oh, I still like to hear what he's saying. Right, okay, I'm but... I'm trying to absorb the knowledge. Beside the point, well. Shaman King's good. You guys should watch it if you're in for a fun shonen. You should just watch it. I mean, it's good. It's good time. The other two yeah. shows, obviously, were Blue Period and Comey, which were the standouts of the fall season. I don't have a lot to say about them, except that I just enjoyed both of them. Like, they just both were good. I've heard a lot of critique about Blue Period. I don't know. Have you guys read this? No. What, okay, what so critiquing? I liked Blue Period a lot. I read the first volume of the manga, and then I was like, okay, I liked it. And then I watched the anime, and I really thought the anime elevated the material for me. I had a good time. I thought the mm -hmm. music was really well done. I thought the voice acting was really well done. There were some limited animation shots, which I think I mentioned after our in our first impressions. And that continued yep. through the whole season, where there was sort of just scenes where you could tell the animation budget was kind of low. Um but that never killed the the like immersion for me. I still really enjoyed it. And for the most part, it adapts the manga word for word. I mean, there's not really even massive It's like panel for panel. Adaptation. Yeah, there's not even like massive pacing issues. It's mostly paced well. Um it stays at sort of a 2 to 4 chapter and episode pace. Uh it's pretty I, I don't know how else to say it, but like for adaptations, it's pretty solid. Um yep. you know, it's not like fucking jjk where it makes it better or demon slayer where it improves the manga material but to me it's not like tokyo avengers where it like shits on the manga material you know it maintained yeah. the story it adapted it well um it did okay it was very standard and i've heard a lot of complaints like in the twitter verse and stuff of people just not being happy with the blue period adaptation compared to the manga and i just don't know like maybe that boils down to the fact that when you're reading a manga you can read it at your own pace and so I yeah. think that for some people, uh, losing that aspect of it and having to follow the pace of whatever the anime director has chosen, which in this time, in this version, in Blue Period, there are a lot of emotional decision making moments. Um, you know, one of the big moments for me, I think, where I was really moved was when uh, his senpai that goes away to college. Um, you remember this part? So she goes away to college. He kind of has like an attraction to her, but doesn't really follow through with it. Um, but then he later goes and visits her at college to kind of get some inspiration. And you see, like, him walk in on her piece. 
I thought that some of the choices in that scene were really impressive because I felt very emotionally moved by it. Was it mm. a little bit slowly directed? Sure. Um, and as a manga reader, it was like one panel, which yeah. great. But to me, I actually thought the choices that he, that the directors made, I thought were very emotionally well done. But I think some viewers were just like, I want to just be able to blaze right through it and get the story, you know, um, which is fine. And for some manga readers, I think that that sort of manga supremacy is important to them, you know. But I genuinely think that overall, Blue Period delivered on a substantial and and pretty well done first season. Um, yeah. It kind of reminds me of the Bakuman adaptation, which is kind of in a similar boat. Uh, moderately paced. The animation was eh, but it delivers the story okay. But I think most people would say go read the manga Bakuman instead of watching the anime version. Um, but overall, the anime is not a bad, not a bad job. You know, that's kind yeah. of my big comparison is that they're kind of in a similar plane, and that they're both shown in mangas that have sort of a a deeper theme. They're not exactly about fighting; they're more about like drama. But yeah. I don't know. I liked it. I, I think I think with a show like Blue, I think like with a story like Blue Period, like this, the focus shouldn't be on like the animation at all like it's all about the characters the conversations that they're having what they're learning how they're adapting it to their everyday life yeah it's like more of like it's just like it's plot driven it's story driven mm -hmm. versus you know something like you know naruto like it, it's mainly fights after fights after fights although yeah. i mean there's a lot of deep stories of naruto too but i think as long as the animation isn't dog shit it's as long as it's like okay Right, like bearable, then it's good. And I think with with Blue Period, the animation wasn't bad at all. I thought there were That's moments felt, where too. it was like maybe it was like Tokyo Revengers level like effort was put in. Yeah, but there weren't ever any. There wasn't a moment where I was watching. I was like, oh, that was like a rough scene. Like yeah. or like oh, that was animated weird. Um, it's just kind of like its own, like the same level. Uh -huh. And there's some scenes where like when he's painting the the iron mm -hmm. uh, piece. Oh, I love like, that. It looks like there's like sparks flying off of the, yeah. the canvas. Or like yeah, in cool. episode one, when he paints the blue piece and he falls into yeah. like the blue ocean world and he's kind of floating around it. I thought the animation was moderately well done there. I don't, I don't remember it looking technically uncomfortable. So I'm not yeah. sure where the Twitter verse is really like getting upset about it. Um, as someone I mean, who Twitter, read Twitter, it hates just hate. I, I mean. read the manga or part of it and I watched the anime and I, I don't think that this was like, a, a true it's not a massive downgrade and i think if people are more fans yeah. of animation they should watch the blue period anime the big issue is just like you're not going to suggest blue period to your fan that, like your friend that loves naruto yes they're both or actually blue period's a seinen isn't it but you know what yeah, i mean like seinen. this is a different type of series um it is supposed to still be kind of directed towards men as an audience member but i do think that maybe there might be this is a more broad sort of seinen where i don't think the mod like the whole fan base is just gonna be dudes you know like um this is not fucking a, a punk manga or whatever they're called. Delinquent manga. Yeah. Um, this was animated by... Uh, Studio Seven Colorado? Arcs. Oh, no. Seven, Seven Arcs, Arcs, which I've never heard of them. Yeah, but I, I thought for this show... Oh, they did Fly Me to the Moon. Yeah, also kind of limited animation on that show. Now yeah. I think about it. I mean, remember that, <laughs> that all the characters in the show had like tiny as fuck feet? Yeah, weird, like, their feet yeah, were just so weird shit. But, but I mean, yeah, Five Minutes in the Moon was all right. Yeah. And like, it's fine. This was all right too. So, I mean, yeah, I, I liked, I guess for me, this is still one of my animes of the year because like, I, I just connected well with the story and I thought that the yeah. art animation, the, the delivery, I thought overall it was still a pretty good package and it worked for me. But Comey, on the other hand, Comey's funny. I don't really know if it's like the most moving series, but it was funny and it was well done. At least it was beautiful. Now, that animation was really gorgeous. Oh but, yeah, you know so that animation to. that studio came out of nowhere because mm -hmm. their Isn't previous it, stuff wasn't anything on that level. What is was it OLM? No, who did OL, I, OLD? I think OLD is, is that what it was? Um, uh, I just had it. I think Comey was cute and it was funny. Comey can't communicate. Anime was animated by OLM. You're right, OLM. OLM yeah, and I think that's they, the same. they did Odd Taxi. Odd too. Taxi, yeah. Yeah, they're definitely not known for being, like, a gorgeous... You know, they're pretty... I think they're mainly known for doing Pokemon, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, uh, like like Beyblade or some shit. Yeah, like kids' shows and shit. So, not exactly their main thing is to worry about, like, high-quality animation. 
But, uh, you know, I think they did a really great job with Comey, and I got to give them props for doing a really good job. But, again, Comey, to me, is, like, it's not some, like, life-changing piece of art. You know, it's just a fun uh, slice-of-life comedy romance. Yeah. Like, that's just what yeah. Comey is. So um, There's nothing really in you- too deep there. Uh, Kenny, do you want to so. tell everyone that Boji's the best real quick? Um, Boji is best boy, and you should vote for him at the Crunchyroll Awards. Boji, please. God damn. Uh, he's best boy. So the uh, last also, anime that the boys watched was Ranking of Kings. And it's the only one. Yeah, it's it's actually the only thing on that. Like, it's the only thing that was not on Netflix that any of yeah. us watched last season. So, I don't know. That turned out weird. But I yeah. am a big ranking of Kings fan. I just, yeah, it's I've, just so I've binged good. all the episodes to the current episode. Well, I think first maybe it slept through all the episodes. So he went I back the slept second through them all and I went back and I watched them all. So it was funny too. I was like, I went to bed, I came home from work and David was like on episode two. Mm-hmm. I went to bed and I woke up and it was on like episode 13 and I was like, David's still asleep. I was like, there's no. I was like, I, I was like, I wonder how many episodes he actually watched last night. Because <laughs> it was, I went back and watched it. I was like, ooh, Boji with that rapier though. Okay, ooh, yeah. it was like, it was like, I'm gonna watch it. I, spoilers. I have Boji. to watch the show because I I regret that I haven't watched it already. It's honestly, the best, bro. I loved Boji episode one, and I'm just mad at myself for not. Oh, Jerry, episode out. two was what hooked me. It's I mean, like it's three a, it's a, it's a, and four. And the worst part is episode one was was really good. It was clearly one of the best ones of the season. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to sit down and watch the rest. It's Wit Studio, right? I think it is. Yeah, yep. it is. Wit. Oh, I yeah, love Wit Studio. Course. Alyssa and I have challenged ourselves in 2022. We want to try to watch every anime that Wit Studio has ever made. That's our goal, because we noticed when we were looking at their stuff, we've already seen like o- almost half of their shows. So I was like, shit, right. we might as well just watch the other half. Um, so that, I think that's does that include movie movie? Movie? Huh? Are you including movies? No, they're TV shows, but we might watch their movies too. They only have a couple movies, I think. But um, the main two shows we're a little worried about is there's like two kids shows that they made that are like 50 plus episodes. And we're like, I don't know if those are available anywhere. You know what I mean? Kidama no Ganjiro. That's one of them. And, and one's like a... Naruto St. Girl Square. There it is. Yep, that's the two. Those are the two that I'm like, eh, but all the rest I'd like to watch. They're all shows that have been on my list anyway. So Oh, I've already watched all. Wait, they did Seraph of the End? I did. Mm-hmm. Did you watch Seraph? And Agent Magus's Bride? No, but I mean, I've heard of those. Oh, yeah. They yeah, they pretty much only make popular shit. I mean, they're pretty good at what they do. The yeah. ones I'm most excited to watch are After the Rain, which I've been wanting to watch for a while. Um, obviously, Ranking of Kings. Um, Don't they make well, that they other make show? After the Rain? Yeah, they made After the Rain. Um, Don't they make that one show? Which one, kid? Vampire Night? God damn it. Not twice. <laughs> <Why do you, laughs> David, why do you say it like that? He said... He said Vampire Night? Vampire Night? Vampire Night? <laughs> No, I gotta finish Vivi too. Whatever. Vivi was so good. Vivi the fluoride eyes. So Ranking of Kings, you're pretty much telling guys that I think the thing is most of our yeah, viewers the best show. They probably haven't listened to it or watched it yet, but this is us pleading with you to go watch it. It's uh it's not over yet. If, it's still going. If you are not already no. watching Ranking of Kings, watch it all. It's all available on Crunchyroll. There's mm-hmm. currently 13, 14 episodes out right now. It'll be a twenty three episode long yep. season. And so, Boji is just the up. best boy. He's just the best boy. He's just the best boy. And that's it, guys. That's pretty much the fall. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. I mean, the only other things that came out was like, there was Demon Slayer re-released Mugen Train as episodes, which Alyssa and I did yeah. watch it. It's literally just the movie chopped up in episodes with one filler episode. Hey, but Jerry, they added like added 10 more frames, oh, though, Jerry. I'll slap them right in the frames. Dumbass <laughs> shit. Extra frames, it's bro. like literally just the fuck. I, I was like intently watching it, trying to find the frames. I was like, where the fuck are these frames? Um, it's just the movie. If you watch the movie, there's no just skip it and watch the Entertainment District arc, which is still airing right now. It's almost over. It's, and it's uh, but, it's it's yeah. pretty. They're doing a pretty so, good job. You yeah, it's UFO Fucking table. They're Demon Slayer. Right. God damn yeah, it. It's whatever. Oh yeah, but, gotta um, go back and watch the actual best show of the season, Arena Vampire Cosmonaut. Uh, don't you mean Vampire Night? <laughs> oh my god. Don't you mean that vampire singing show? I don't know what it was called. Oh yeah, what was that? Oh, one? deep in. Oh, uh, uh, Visual Prison. Uh, oh, Visual Prison. Visual Prison. Okay. <laughs> What was the one song they sang to? Uh, I don't. I can't, I can't even remember. We were singing it so I much on that. Even, I yeah. Okay, so that was fall, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed our fall twenty twenty one wrap up as we move in next week to our winter first impressions. 
very quickly, uh, so as of this recording, there's already been like two episodes or show, most of these shows. The third episode will probably air before our first impressions air. No big deal, though. Just remember, watch the first episode before you listen to, of the 13 shows, watch the first episode of all of them before you listen to our next podcast episode. The 13 shows that we will be watching this season, I'm going to list them off really quickly. I did not write down what um, streaming service they're available on. But I do have the names of them. So the 13 shows we're watching for this season are Worlds in Harem, My Dress Up Darling, Orient, Requiem of the Rose King, The Strongest Sage with the Weakest Crest, The Genius Prince's Guide to Raising a Nation Out of Debt, In the Land of Leedale, Love of Kill, Ryman's Club, Tokyo 24th Ward, Akabi Sailor Uniform, which is a really weird, like, fucking foot, foot fetish show. Um, sub- Wait, yeah, hey, what? It's, there's got some foot shit going on, guys. Uh, Sabuki, Bisco, and Police in a Pod. Those are our 13 shows for this season. Make sure you guys go and watch those before our next episode of this podcast, as we will be posting our winter first impressions. If you're unfamiliar with those episodes, we do them every season. Uh, and what we do is we watch 13 brand new anime. These are not 13 shows that have sequels. They're not remakes. These are 13 brand new anime that are airing for the first time that you as a listener could potentially go and watch the rest of. And we want to give you our first impressions of the first episodes of each of those. So if you want to come along and listen to our thoughts on those, definitely join us next on the next episode of the podcast. But before we wrap up today, we got to do these motherfucking Crunchyroll <laughs> Awards, baby. We want to quickly go over with you guys. Just as of this, up. I got to be honest. As of okay, this week. We and by the time this episode airs, uh, you will still be able to vote in the Crunchyroll Anime Awards, which are considered kind of the... I don't know how to put this, but they've kind of become like the... They like, get bigger and bigger every year. I, like, are they the, like, pinnacle of anime awards in the U.S.? Like, I don't... It's kind of weird, I mean, there's, but... There's no other, like, voting platform for this type of stuff. It's yeah. Just Crunchyroll, this like, is like, I guess so. The winners of these awards are kind of considered, for American audience, like the... These are like the Oscars of American anime. I don't... I don't know how else yeah. to put it. There's no real other like platform doing anything like this in the U.S. So Crunchyroll has kind of taken the lead. And this, I think, the sixth or seventh. I think it's sixth, maybe, annual time they've done this. So let's go through it, David. Run us through. Right. And Kenny and me and David are going to try to tell you guys what we would vote for each of the categories. Um, slash, we are voting. Yeah. So you guys, are voting, cool. yeah. make sure you guys These are UAPs <laughs> votes. Sure. Yes. Putting them in officially yes, yes, for the yes. Crunchyroll Anime Awards 2021. And make sure that you guys, if this this episode should be out in time, you should still be able to go vote if you're listening to this in the first couple days of it coming out. If you're listening to this a week or so after it comes out, the voting is probably already closed. The winners are going to get announced in February for these awards. Um, but, David, let's do it. Let's uh, let's go through it. Tell us. They, uh, so the votes, the voting should be, last day should be January 25th. It's five days from the current date. So... Probably be like three days after this episode comes out is my plan. If this episode yeah. comes out when I plan for it to. Yeah. All right. So anime of the year. First one. Biggest one. Anime of the year. You got 8686, JKK, Core 2, Ranking of Kings, Sunny Boy, Odd Taxi, Attack on Titan, Final Season Part 1. I think I already know what we all think. Odd Taxi. It's Odd Taxi. Odd Taxi. That's the anime of the year. All right. That was already yeah. anime. But here's the thing. Can you guys explain to me why 86 is nominated in that category? Uh, I doesn't it feel? I, I, I actually think that it doesn't like, it feel like the odd one out of those six yeah, shows. Yeah, it yeah. does. But I think uh, season two or part two was a lot was better. It season two or was it part? Two? I think it's I think it was part. I think it's better. season one, core two. I part think it's two. all one. Yeah. Yeah. Season, yeah, yeah. I Which guess, is weird because like the first part was like all right. I watched the part, the first part of eighty six, eighty six. Yeah, it was all right. But like anime of the year nomination though. All right, like, yeah. is it that good? That's what I don't know. Like, why, I don't know. Why is it? Why is it X Arm in there? <laughs> I just feel like maybe like Mushoku Tensei would have been a great sixth nomination in in its place. Yeah. I personally think Blue Period should have been there instead of eighty six. Um, I, I'm surprised Comey isn't in there instead of eighty six. You know what I mean? Like, I think there were is better. It, so all anime that came out in 2021, or is it only anime that came out on on Crunchyroll's platform? Um. What are those six shows again? I'm pretty sure some of them didn't come out on Crunchyroll. Um, 8686 was JJK, uh, was, was Ranking of Kings, Sunny Boy, Odd Taxi. Sunny Bo- no, those Sunny Boy didn't come out on Crunchyroll. Was it Funimation? It's Funimation only. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure all throughout you'll see shows that, aren't, that weren't on Crunchyroll. I think it's okay. every anime. 
So I think okay. that's the the weird part there. Again, I just feel like 86 is the odd man out there. I think there were better mm-hmm. shows that deserve that spot. People that are fans of 86 are going to disagree with me. Um, but I, I really think it's the one that's kind of the weakest of the bunch there. Obviously, AOT oh, Final yeah. Season Part 1. That's, I think that's just fan service. It feels like, like that got nominated. Yeah. Attack on Titan showed up much too much in all of these awards. Just like so. JJK Core 2. like They literally like, well, half of JJK came out in 2021, so it's nominatable. And I'm like, okay. Like, why, is, why isn't Vivi in there? Vivi yeah. should be replacing. Oh, yeah. Vivi would have been a great option to have thrown in there as a top. There are just other shows that should. Okay, whatever. That's the first award. Okay. Let's go next. Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. okay, next one is Best Boy. Senku from Dr. It's Stone. Bungie. Don't even, no, don't even say anything. Otakawa from Otaxi. Wait, it's Kenny. Bungie. Dragon from Tokyo Revengers. Mikey from Tokyo Kenny, Revengers. Kenny, Mikey. OZ from Ranking of Kings. Bungie. Or Izumi Miyamura from Horror Mia. No, it's I. I Miyamura's Ooh. a good choice. Dragon's a good choice. Mikey's a good choice. But Boji is my best boy. I think okay? those are all pretty Jerry, much. Jerry, who do you think? Jerry, I actually think those are all great best boys. I think Otakawa is actually the least best boy. He's a great yeah. protagonist. Yeah, I think, but he's I think not really he best it. boy. Yeah, he was not a best boy. No, but the other five are actually the the, actually the other five kind of goaded. No cap. It's kind of um, hard. They, they, hard. That's kind of Mikey and Dragon. For me too. personally, I think Dragon. The I best had. Boy. I had to put Senku because I just love him too much. And oh, I think Mikey is a close second for me because Mikey, it's it's Sanjiro Mikey. I don't know what else. Well, ba- Baji was I, my second. So. I personally think Mikey's going to win. I think Mikey's going to win. You think cat. so? Yeah, Mikey I think may Mikey's win. Gonna. I love me some Mikey. Yeah, I think if, only they, if only they knew what, what Mikey does. I think Mikey's going to win because Mikey. Hey, listen, Tom you got you to save Mikey. Lead, okay? <laughs> double time leap. You got to save Mikey, okay? He's going to go back and save Mikey's brother, brother yes. and then nothing's ever bad is going to happen. I personally would vote Senku, though, because I like Senku the best, so. It's Boji for me. It's, I, it's uh, Boji's best. The, the, the consent, the, the majority was Boji, so I voted for Boji. Okay, great. The majority, um, it's, there's two of us. David said well, Draken, I said Senku, you said Boji, and then he asked me who our second well, I said, was. I said, I said, I said Mikey, I said you said Boji. Boji. Yeah, so since yeah. his second was Boji, it gives Boji a slight nod. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, this is going to be easy, I think. Boji's Best girl. Good. So, oh, Vladelina, uh, Vladelina uh, Malize from 8686, the main girl. Yeah, uh, I didn't, I don't know. Kugisaki from JJK. Shoko Komi from Komi Can't Communicate. Ai Oto from Wonder Egg Priority. Sarasa Watanabe from Kageki Shoujo. Or Toru Honda from Fruits Basket, the final season. I think I got to go with Sarasa, bro. Oh, she was great, though. But I personally, am, I'm voting Komi, but, dog. I'm voting Komi. I'm a- Yo, Comey's Comey. Yo, yo, Comey got yo, Comey, yo, Comey got yo, Comey got a caboose though, dog. She got yo, oh my God. yo, Comey, God. Comey got it, dog. She's just... fifteen, Jerry. Wait, 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 no. <laughs> but I yeah, gotta, right. I gotta give I it to Comey, Comey dog. Comey's, Comey. Comey's adorable, dog. All right, okay, okay. Next best protagonist: Aaron Yeager, Attack on Titan. What the fuck? No. Joe Megalobox. Damn it. Boji, Wrecking of Kings. Season two. Uh, I Oto Wonder Egg Priority. Oh, Kitty already knows his answer. <laughs> Otakawa Odd Taxi or Yuji Itadori from JJK. Ooh, there are I two good I, ones. I, this I, is I tough. I voted Yuji. Or you? Sorry, Yuji. Yuji. I voted Yuji. Honestly. I love Otakawa, but you, I, I would have voted Yuji as my top, and then Otakawa as my second. Um, He's gonna say it's Boji. Boji. It's, it's Boji, Boji for me. Boji. It's Boji for me, boys. What would your, what would your number two be? Kenny? Who's your number two, Kenny? Yuji. Yeah. Yuji. Okay. I think the vote goes to Yuji. Okay, we vote for Yuji. All he's right. a good. He's a good protagonist. I think, honestly. Overall. Oh. Oh, I saw memes for this. So this they, pissed they, me off. They put oh, Aaron, Aaron Yeager both as categories both categories best protagonist yeah. and best antagonist. So okay, be, okay, vote for best antagonist. Oh, Aaron this one. Yeager. I know exactly who the answer to this is. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to say it last year. Aaron Yeager, Attack on Titan. Tamura Shigaraki, My Hero Academia. Echidna from ReZero. Teta Kisaki from Tokyo Revengers. Kenny, just wait. Uh, Adam Ainosuke Shindo from Skate the Infinity. Kenny, just wait. Or Yano. Yano! 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 When he raps, damn it! When he raps, bro! Yano raps whenever he speaks. Yano. That's his thing. It's gotta be Yano. No question. Yano, baby. What the? Oh, this is a meme. Okay, vote for best fight scene Aaron Yeager versus the Warhammer Titan. 
Okay. Yuji that. Itadori and uh, Toto versus that, Hanami. I think this boogie, is my boogie, 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 boogie. That's probably it. Elma Listen. versus Toru from uh, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Okay. I think that was a good fight, but yeah, uh, nobody likes Vivi it. Vivi versus Yugo uh, Kakitani from Vivi. Damn, I, didn't watch that fight. I wish I I'm watched sure it. I'm sure that's really good, though. Yuji yeah. Itadori and Kugisaki versus Esso and Kishizu from JJK, oh, yeah. uh, Second Core. Or... Naruto Uzumaki versus Ishiki Otsuki. Boo! Boo! Naruto! Boo! Naruto boo! 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 <laughs> Bro, wait, who is that guy? That first guy? Is that Boruto's dad? Is that Boruto's dad? They let like Boruto's dad in that show? What the my, heck? My, my vote, personal vote Toto. would be the Toto and Yuji. Toto, yep. Yeah, yeah, Yuji, Yuji and Toto. Fine. Yuji and Toto. That's it. He Boogie Woogie. Boogie I love Woogie. Toto. I love Toto. That's the introduction of, of... That's when they introduced Boogie Woogie. Yeah. Yep. Remember when he had that whole scene where he was just like thinking in his bre- in his head about something? He's like, "Oh yeah, I have like infinite number of brain cells or something like that." His past life with you, his, I, his IQ oh, is like over three thousand. Dude, something. Toto, Toto, Toto is un yeah, he's unclappable, dog. That dude's the man. I I love him. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. Uh oh, okay. So vote for best director. So okay. Yuichiro Hayashi for Attack on Titan Final Season Part One. Nope, bad. Yo Yo Moriyama for Megalobox Two Nomad. I Damn it, I Shingo that Natsume for Sunny Boy. Did watch Sunny Boy. The worst part Shin- is he's a great director, and that's why he got to do Sunny Boy. So that's like right, such yeah. a tough. That, that's his original. That's work, his right? show. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like he probably. Uh, I just wish we had watched more of it. Yeah, uh, Shin Wakabayashi for Wonder Egg Priority. Mm-hmm. Baku Kinoshita for A Taxi and Sung Hu Park for JJK Core 2. I would probably just go with Jujutsu Kaisen. JJK. I mean, it, just some of the best animation of the year still. Yeah. It just never really got topped. And I think that director just did a really good job. My only other would be maybe Sunny Boy's director, but again, I just didn't watch I was, enough. I was thinking Odd Taxi's. I think Odd Taxi is. Got director, really, director it's got like a really overall, good script. Right? Like, it, yeah, it's got a really good script, but I don't know if the animation director is really like the one to be praised. Oh, is that you specifically I mean? animation director? Yeah, what else would you Yeah, this is like the animation director. That's who that guy is. Oh. He uh, I was saying like director as in like Oh, no, no, he didn't he didn't like, like write it overall. or overall. So that guy's the producer. Yeah, that'd be that's more producer, writer, head writer, stuff like that. This is okay. specifically the animation director, so uh, to oh, me, okay. to me, I, okay. JJK. I would pick JJK then. Yeah. I, easily JJK. All the, all the other ones. But Sunny Boy, um, if I think I watch it, I might have voted Sunny Boy because it did have a I really mean, pretty. It, it had a really well done first episode. First episode was all right. Yeah, yeah, it was all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, vote for best overall animation: Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, Mugen Train Arc, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S, Vivi, Fluoride the Eye Song, Wonder Egg Priority, Mushoku Tensei, Jobless Reincarnation Core One. Or Jujutsu Kaisen Core Two, guys. I don't want to say it, but it ha- I mean, Yuvo, Yuvo uh, Table is just so good. Bro. Demon Slayer, dog. It's, it's so Slayer. good. It's Demon Slayer. David. It's so uh, good. Uh, I know that like JJK was great. Mushoku, true. but did you watch Demon Slayer Mugen Train? I did. I I I personally would still pick JJK over Demon Slayer, no, but I'll, I'll, I'll submit them over Demon Slayer. Overall just, animation, I'll, it had to be overall, Mugen Train. That okay. shit went way too hard. It went hard for no reason. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's just it so movie beautiful. Budget. Yeah, it did. It's so beautiful. I guess two thirds of the movie was just like peak animation. It really it was, was. The whole fight between Ringoku and that Azuka, the the other demon, oh, uh, 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 the upper Az- third, Azuka. Yeah, he's Fuck one it. of the coolest. He's one of the coolest moons too. <clears throat> oh, I don't yeah. even know what to say. Yeah, it's got to go to Demon Slayer. Okay, what's next? Okay, vote for best character design. Okay, Tadashi Hiramatsu for JJK. Atsuko Nozaki for Ranking of Kings, uh, Flat Studio and Yuichi Takahashi for Vivi Fluoride Eye Song, Saki Takahashi for Wonder Egg Priority, Michi Nori Chiba for Skate the Infinity, or Baku Kinoshida and Hirobi Nakayama for Odd Taxi. Character well, design. Odd Taxi is is it character design. Yeah, character, character designs. Yeah. I was thinking Odd Taxi. Too. I'm torn. I'm torn because. But the I also weird, like Skate the Infinities. The, yeah, the weird thing is that like most of the people nominated in this category didn't create those characters. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, like, is it just yeah. specifically like designing them in yeah, the anime form? Exactly. It means it's the guy that like so like for Ranking of Kings and JJK, the guy just looked at the manga. It was his job to look at the manga and create the character sheets for the anime, which to me yeah. is not really fin- like fantastical. While 
Skate and Odd Taxi, they made those from the they're, ground they're from the ground up. Yeah. So that yeah. I definitely feel more strongly about one of the two. I like well, Wonder Egg is also original. Oh, you're right, Wonder Egg too. Um, I feel more Ooh, confident. I, feel like, well, I did like Wonder Egg's character designs too a lot. I think the character does. What do you mean? The I one that sticks Taxi out to me. Like... I love Odd Taxi's designs because they're super simple. But I don't. I wouldn't use the word best. You know what I mean? Because they're super simple. They work for they're the all show. Animals, bro. But they're cool. I think the one that sticks out the most to me is Skate. But that's just my. I would probably vote Skate. Because I think they have really cool, unique character designs. They all looked really pretty, um, and they all had a really great. Uh, but I think my finance, my final answer would be Wonder Egg. So we're all torn. Okay, but my number two would be Skate. My number two would be Odd they, Taxi. They had to make. They had to make both animal and. What's your number two, Kitty? Kitty, what's your number two? My number two is Odd Taxi again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll I'll just submit it for odd. Do taxi. odd taxi. No, no, what's what's really your number two though, Kitty? I don't know. Okay, I I just, I just think all of them are. Whatever. Do odd taxi. Odd, odd taxi is okay. really my number two anyway. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. I, I think best best that. musical score. Uh, I'm just gonna say the animes. I don't really need to say it's that. odd taxi. Yeah. What's the, what's eighty six eighty six Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba Mugen Train arc Odd Taxi oh. Wondering oh. Priority Vivi Fluoride Eye Song or Megalobox. Mm. Oof, that's really tough. I feel like if I watched all of Vivi, taxi? I would say Vivi. Vivi was like about music, TV. but we didn't watch it. Yeah, that's the shitty part. Uh, Yana raps in Odd Taxi, so uh, Odd Taxi has a, a really great. Him. It does have a really great soundtrack. I mean, there's no they lie. They put about a beat that. over him every time. I mean, but, but but Demon Slayer's music was really good too. You're not wrong. You, Demon, Slayer's right a, Demon Slayer's Demon is a Yana good raps. soundtrack. Yano rap. Can he stop? <laughs> no, I mean he is right. Yano does rap. I, I actually just they checked my notes. A character I checked my notes, David, and Yano, yeah. du- he is a rapper. So yeah. after checking yeah. my notes, I'm actually. I'm trying to think of like overall music. Like Yano rapping was, was fire all the time, but I'm trying to yeah. think. I don't remember any like any of the other like themes that played throughout. It has a couple. Was, it has a. One? Well, I mean, obviously the opening ending were really well done, but I'd say oh, it has yeah. a couple different tension themes that I think worked really well in Odd Taxi, mainly to build suspense around yeah. certain scenarios. Um, but the, I mean, Demon Slayer has also some that work like that. I, I, this one's tough, man. This one's score tough, is tough. Yeah. If I were to I actually pick, I'll, I'll just say Odd Taxi. I would if I were to genuinely, I think Blue Period had a better score than all of them, but fuck me. Oh, I, I it, didn't, it didn't even get nominated. Comey, Comey had an amazing score. Yeah. Comey way, score? way better scores. Why is Comey not in this? I don't know what's going on. Those both should have been nominated. Lame. Y'all know raps, okay? Those both, Blue is. Period would have been my vote if it was nominated, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'm next. just well. I just I just put on taxi then. Next, okay. Next, uh, best VA performance, Jap- best Japanese voice actor performance. Okay, Yano, it's Yano. Uh, Ayane Sakura for Gabby from Attack on Titan. <laughs> Kiyoshi Kobayashi for Daisuke Jigen from Lupin the Third Part Six. He's good, but I didn't watch that part. Oh, I already know what. Fuck, I already know what I'm gonna vote for. Uh. Kanada Aik- Aikawa for Ai Oto from Wonder Egg Priority. Natsuki Hanai, Hanai for Otakawa from mm-hmm. Otaxi. Pretty Yuki Kai- Kaji for Aaron Yeager. And Aoi Yuki for Kumoko from So I'm a Spider, So What? Fuck you, David. No. She's I terrible. She was terrible. I I genuinely enjoyed her performance. If I had to be Kyoko real, Kumoko was my favorite part of Small Outsider. So what? If I had to be and real, I'm torn between Otakawa and Aaron. Actually, I think both were really good performances, VA wise. Otakawa my... was obviously more muted, but that mm-hmm. worked for his performance, and he did it a really a stellar job. Yeah. Aaron had a really great season with that season, and that voice actor shreds to do what he does, and he does a good job. Um. That My would, second vote would be for Yuki. Yeah, I'll, for, I'd for say Aaron, Aaron number one, Otakawa number two. What are you at, Ken? I'm thinking Otakawa as well, but I also I, isn't Jigen's voice actor like the same guy that's doing it's, it? Forever? Yeah, it's like his legacy voice actor. It's uh, so yeah. it's kind of tough because it's like I'm sure he did a great job, but he's yeah. been doing Jigen for fucking ever for years. So, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I would go I'm Otakawa just, or I'm gonna, Aaron. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna just vote Aaron. I just voted Aaron. I'm cool with it. Good job, Yuki. Uh, <laughs> best English voice actor performance. Didn't watch Brittany it. Brittany Cox for Fana. Oh, didn't watch from it. From Fana Pirate Princess. Adam MacArthur for Yuji Itadori. I love oh, Fana. I didn't watch it. Uh, I did watch um, 
English dub of JJK, and it was I really liked it all. Uh, Matt Shipman for Reiki Kian from Skate the Infinity. I didn't David watch Wall it. from Adam Skate the Infinity. I didn't watch Laura it. Bailey Toru Honda from Fruit Basket the I did, season. I didn't watch it. Anirus Queen Queen Nones, probably mispronounced it. I'm sorry. Rika Kawaii from Wonder Egg Priority. I didn't watch it. Okay, Honestly, I voted for Adam. I yeah, voted for Adam. you can just give it to Adam. He's cool. That's fine. I don't have it. Uh, okay, we got we got eight more. We're gonna blast these. Best opening eight more? Se- eight best more. opening sequence. Kenny's like Ruby, really quick. Yeah. Best opener. Tell Odd taxi? Odd taxi. Just go. Just okay, listen, oh, listen, wait, listen. wait, 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 wait. No, I, oh, I know which one I'm voting for. Wait. Yeah. Okay. So come on, come on. The, the Attack on Titan Final Season Part One opener. Da, da, dee, dee, da, the, dee, the JJK opener two. Opening two. Odd taxi opening. Cryberry Crybaby Tokyo Revenger opening. I know Supreme, the Fauna Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid opening, and then Kaibutsu, the Yosabi opening for B Stars, which I, I'm assuming is season two. It is season two. Uh, yes. um, oh, my vote is Tokyo Revengers. Tokyo Revengers. Tokyo Revengers, no cap. Down. Cry, down. cry, baby. It's fucking down. Look how mad Kitty is. He's like, no, on taxi. No, Kitty's, no, no, Kitty's an on right. taxi simp. Kitty's going to go on his own computer later and just, am... he's just going to roll through and just vote on taxi and Boji on all of them. That's <laughs> the. Uh, okay, so best King's ending song. Opening got shafted oh, there. it did. The Reggae King's opening is so good. So oh, good. yeah, that one probably should have been nominated. It's That's like weird. so shafted. obscure. So obscure. Um, okay, next. Wait, Call Me Can't Communicate opening got shafted. Uh, Blue Period's Blue opening period. got shafted. Oh, I love Blue Period's opening. Fuck me, dog. Okay. Cry, Baby. Cry Baby. Cry uh, Baby was better than those. Cry Baby. I'm not Cry Baby. Baby. I got opening of the year. year. Best opening of the well, year. Well, they put I will Attack on Titan at least had a cult like that. that it was that one that was like da dee da 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 dee yeah. da. It was like all over TikTok. I respect Although, it. Although I do like I do like their final season part two opening much more. The death metal. It's, oh, it's not death metal, like rock metal one. Yeah. It's like heavy metal. Obviously. It reminds me of Death hey, Note. Seven opening more categories, too. guys. Come on. Look, Kenny's hungry. Right. Yo, Kenny's hungry. Kenny's dog. trying to get that. Yo, he's, yo, he's, he's hungry. Okay, okay. How did okay. you get Best so hungry, bro? Song, Shogeki. Uh, from I guess the ending from Attack on Titan Final Season Part One. I don't remember that. Uh, Shiragane, the Just ending. The endings, the anime is dead. Just tell me the anime. Uh, oh, just tell me the anime. hungry. He's kidding. Yeah. gonna go. I'm gonna just, eat. You're just reading um, off all these names that we don't know. Okay, okay. Shadow's House ending. B Stars ending from season two. So I'm inspired. Okay. So what's ending? That's my vote. Uh, Skate the Infinity's ending. That's my vote. Demon Slayer, too much to know. Yeah, I have a Mugen Trainer, Mugen Train arc ending. Kenny and I both skate. What's Skate the Infinity's arc? What's what's that ending? It's It's the one where they like fist bump and shit. No, 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 no. It's like a kind of sounds like a beach song. Um, yeah, it actually yeah. shows it's like some beachy dope. vocals. It's really oh, cute. Oh, I do remember. I vote for that one. It's too. fire, dog. It's fire. Okay, but, I voted for it. Uh, isn't the okay. ending of Soma Spider the one where she's like, like on the? She's like, she's yeah. like doing like, like metal, yeah. yeah and it's like the voice actor too, stupid. which is so funny. Okay, uh, okay, the last couple are. I think they're just uh, like categories, right? Yeah. So okay. So best action. So Attack on Titan, Final Season Part One, JJK, Vivi, Florida Ice Song, Wonder Egg Priority, SSSS, Dina Zamdon. Demon Slayer Mugen Train arc. Mm. Best action? I would say JJK. Demon JJK. Slayer. Oh, uh, okay. I go I mean for best I think Demon Slayer had the better animation, but I think JJK has the better like actual choreograph choreography to yeah. work. Like better actual action. Does that make sense? I'd give I it, you. I'd give it to JJK. That's my vote. What do you think? All right. Best best comedy. Don't toy with me, Miss Nagatoro. Komi can't communicate. Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Odd Taxi. Just vote for it. Is Odd Taxi, is, is Odd Taxi this, a comedy? It's not a comedy. No, not I a don't comedy. know. I don't know why that's even there. <laughs> that's Life not going to win that category. Uramachi, Onisan, Heaven's Design Team. I really wish that we talked about Life Lessons with Uramachi, Onisan. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just vote for Komi, guys. Are y'all playing right Give now? Me the, he's hangry. Uh, okay, I'm going to... I think I would personally vote Comey, but you guys like Comey. you guys like Nagatoro, so that's why I'm surprised. I did like I did like Nagatoro, but Comey was funnier. Okay. Um, okay, last four. Best drama: eighty six, eighty six, Kageki Shoujo, Two Year Eternity, Wonder Egg Priority, Odd Taxi, Fruits Basket, The Final Season. Odd, hey, well, taxi. Odd taxi is both in comedy and drama. Yeah, it's stupid. It's a drama. I'd vote. It is a that. drama. It's yeah. it's a drama thriller. It's, a, it's, it's a literally drama, a drama mystery thriller. thriller. Yeah, this is literally. There's no comedy. I would actually say there's no comedy aspect to it. Yeah, it had like maybe a couple couple funny lines, but that's really it. It's a odd taxi for me. 
Do you both pick out taxi? Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. Three more, uh, Kenny. Three more. Romance. B stars. Don't uh, this me, is Toro, 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 Mia. Toro, oh, Mia. It's Toro, Mia. It's Toro, Mia. It's Toro, Mia. Toro, Mia was so good. It's Toro, Mia. I love how Comey can't communicate in there because it's not even like romance yet. So that's funny. It's more of a comedy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Best fantasy. Michelle Katense, ranking that, of that one. Oh, or Ooh. ranking. Of, Kenny's going to say ranking. Case study of Vanitas, Wonder Egg Priority, Two Year Eternity. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. Oh, at least they made it easy. It's a 50 50 for me, guys. My vote is Michelle Katense. Over Maybe ranking it's of Michoku. Kings. <laughs> Maybe okay. it's because it's more of a fantasy. I only watched Michelle, so Michelle would be my vote, too. <laughs> I so like I would do Michelle Katense. I really like ranking, ranking of Kings, but it's not I'm really just thinking like strictly fantasy. I don't know. I yeah, think, there's no elves or dwarves or nothing. Right. Like, yeah. Ranking of Kings is more of like a... It's I mean, more of a coming of giants, age. Though. Okay, I got you. Yeah, they're giants and shit. I don't know, man. And the last I award... Vote, I, I vote for Mishoku. That makes sense. Okay, okay, best film, best movie. Words bubble up like soda pop. Josie, the tiger and the fish. Evangelion 3.0. Bell, Demon Slayer and Mugen Train. Shirabako the movie, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer. It's, what's the best-selling anime movie of all time? It's Demon Slayer, guys. The best-selling movie in Japan. I hate oh, myself for it, but it's Demon Slayer. Words bubble up like soda it's pop was not as... It was not... It, that shouldn't even be on it. there. <laughs> it was... Uh, I do want to see Bell still. I do wonder if I it's do, I do Bell. Too. Yeah, Does Bell so. come out like in a few weeks? No, it's, 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 it's you, you can go out. see it right it now. It came out. Yeah. It's in USC. Oh, we should go see Okay. All right. So those are all the Crunchyroll... Uh, 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 categories we've UAP has some officially submitted our votes. Um, so hope you all you know enjoyed listening to that. Uh, you have until January 25th to vote. Apparently, you can vote daily, yeah. You can vote weird. once a day. So Kenny's gonna log on every day for the next five days and vote. <laughs> odd taxi, odd taxi, odd taxi, odd taxi, boji, odd taxi, o- boji. Um, Okay. Boji doesn't get right, best cool. boy. I'm going to be pissed, honestly. That's a wrap, boys. So thank you guys so much for listening again. This has been the Answers to Anime Podcast. Make sure that you guys like, comment, subscribe, do all of that over on YouTube because it helps us to grow with the algorithm here on YouTube. Also, go over to Apple Podcasts. Go over to Spotify. Give us a five-star review. Make sure that you follow us on those platforms because doing all of that helps us to grow. It helps us to make more people, get more audience, meet more people that love anime just like you. And we want to talk to you, so make sure you guys leave those comments down below so that we can connect. We can talk about all of your opinions on the Crunchyroll Anime Awards. Tell us why we were wrong, whatever you want to say. Also, tell us why our spring wrap-up was not uh, fantastic. I don't know. I think we did really well with our wrap-up, or fall wrap-up. It's not fall, spring anymore. What the fuck? Yeah. On that, that was, note, that was okay. thank you guys so much for listening. This has been the Uncensored Anime Podcast, and we're saying peace.